This is the best of Empty the Bench 2022 with Tom Albano and Nick Morgison on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. We say goodbye to 2022 and welcome 2023. Happy New Year! And welcome everyone to part two of Empty the Bench, the best of 2022. Yes, a lot of twos in that title. Uh, Tom Vado here along with Nick Morgison. And we are going to, this is basically going to be a continuation of last week's uh, best of. So last week we were doing the first half of the year looking at the best of sports stories that we've covered and best segments of the show from January to June. This week... We're going to be covering the second half of the year. We're going to be looking at the top sports stories, top moments and discussions from the show from July all the way up to December, the current month, the end of the year. Uh, yes, Nick Federa is not with us. We will address the situation with Nick Federa in the near future. However, we are just going to focus here on the best of with uh, 2022. And looking back on, like I said, the rest of this year and then at the end saying goodbye to 2022 and hello to 2023 yeah as i've said many times when we've done these best ofs over the years the second half usually has the better stories and usually that has to do with some of the sports that are played in the second half of the year we get a lot of the headlines differently you have nfl you have nba mlb's done so you're not getting those headlines you got more right. of those in the first half so uh, the start of the NBA season, the start of the NHL season, the postseason of the Major League Baseball. Uh, yeah, and I was looking through the different stories. There's a lot of months. Like last last week's uh, thing had a couple of months that had a lot. This uh, this half of the year, f- uh, quite a few months have a lot of stories to them. December, basically every story that we covered in December is going to have a segment. Yeah, I've said this to Tom, I've said this to many people on our network. This usually doesn't happen where in December <clears throat> you're getting the biggest and best or baddest stories of the year. And when I look at our December month, just in general, and I know we'll obviously get to it towards the end of this, but just between MLB Free Agency, Grant Wall, Brittany Griner alone, that that could be a full month's worth of uh, stories right there. Yeah, it's it's nuts how it's nuts how the end of the year just seemed to be one hit after another, and the hits still haven't stopped even when we're on our break. I mean, we're gonna have headlines. I think you might have coined this line. We, we're gonna have headlines that were left over in twenty twenty two, heading into the beginning of twenty twenty three. Yeah, it's it's going to end up being like I don't know. It, it's gonna feel like a. It's going to feel like a two or three hour long edition of Sports Center by the time we're done with our first episode. I mean, let's put it this way. At least we're not a repeat edition that they re air five million times a day. Yeah, and the overnight hours that you put on when you can't sleep. <laughs> God, I missed the overnight Sports Centers when they were actually live. I mean, now they only do like West Coast all the way up to like 1 a.m. and then it's over basically. Oh, well. But. Let's uh, have a look back now on some of the big stories of 2022. So, at like last month, we're going to do these. I mean, last last week, we were going to do these in two-month uh, spans. So, we're going to start things off with July and August. And July had quite a few stories that were starting to trickle over, you know, that we made mention started on uh, last week's uh, show, May, June. And we're now are trickling over. So, we still have... Baker Mayfield storyline to talk about because in July he officially gets traded to the Panthers. We still have more about the Deshaun Watson. We still have more about the Nets and Kevin Durant and the trade request. We'll have more on Kyrie later on in this show, but focus on Kevin Durant and his trade request. It's all, all those are some, those were the big stories, but then July, you also had things like the Colorado avalanche winning the Stanley cup, their first Stanley cup in about 20 years or so. 
Rudy Gobert getting traded as the Jazz trade off their parts and a take from us that kind of uh didn't live went, on to its hype. Yeah, as they find themselves currently at ninth, tenth place in their conference. I mean, it. What's weird about that story is Rudy Gobert was not happy. Donovan Mitchell and he's another one we'll get to. Both yeah, in the Utah. Whole thing the Knicks, you're right. Right. So, but Utah was not a was a good team with two great all stars at Gobert and Mitchell, but they were never. They would get to the playoffs. They were a one seed one year, and they just don't win. They never won. They were never able to get over the hump. And then they basically just said, well, I'm going to blow it up. And that's what they did. And now, ironically, Utah is playing better, if you could say that, which I didn't expect. And Minnesota's in 10th. And I don't know, uh, as we speak. And the Knicks, I don't know. I just, where uh, are they? Uh, the, the freezing cold take was our take on uh, the Timberwolves. Bad That's takes right. That we'll probably be looking at us. Uh, as for the Knicks and where they stand in the conference, they I think stand, they're fifth. They are sixth in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> and they are one of the hottest teams you. in the NBA right now. It's nuts. And Utah's in seventh. So Utah's in seventh, and the Timberwolves are Timberwolves in tenth. In tenth. Yeah. And and they acquired the star. Go figure. Um, just looking at some of the other headlines as well. You, you had brought up uh, Baker Mayfield. By the way, I would take Baker Mayfield over Zach Wilson at this point. That's how <laughs> desperate I am for a quarterback change. Um, I know that's saying a lot considering I don't like Baker either. And that stupid take he had on that podcast of uh, his friends sitting on that couch. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. Donovan Mitchell thing that you talked about. July was also the month where Vince McMahon officially stepped down as World Wrestling Entertainment Chairman or WWE Chairman. I, again, I'm not, I'm not the biggest WWE fan, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know what Vince McMahon is about and the horrible reputation that has followed him over the years. And now, and and I think we did an update to the story that there was even more hush money scandals that came out behind it. Yeah, and now the le one of the last stories we did in December was that Vince McMahon is looking to get back into WWE. It's not on this, uh, not on this best stuff, but it is the last thing, one of the last things that we talked about. But you know what is on this best stuff, Nick? Do you remember the homework clause in Kyler Murray's contract? Oh, how could you not? It made news headlines for a week or two weeks. It news took a week, and then they removed it. I mean, a mockery. I've never heard of such a clause. Like I've heard of incentives. I've heard of like in baseball, they do these clauses, like where if you get to a certain amount of at bats, then your next year's contract kicks in. Or if you win one of the accolades at the end of the year, MVP, Cy Young Award, you get a bonus. I've never heard of a homework clause. I you you just expect a quarterback, especially if you're starting quarterback, to do your homework on teams coming in. Yeah, uh, I, I mean the Cardinals just did not play up to their uh, to their expectations. Whether you know, regardless of if Murray was the starting quarterback or not, regardless if they had DeAndre Hopkins or not, this was just an overall disastrous year for the Cardinals. I mean, and um, then, and then they lost Kyler Murray for the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's August, that's forty six million dollars down the drain. By the way, too. As for August, uh, I think one of the bigger uh, – obviously, we still had more Kevin Durant stuff. Uh, he was he chose to remain with the Nets. Uh, the Knicks, meanwhile, just signed R.J. Barrett for an extension rather than trade him for Donovan Mitchell. Uh, all the trade deadline stuff in baseball where the Padres acquired um, Guan Soto. The Angels decided to stick with Shohei Otani. You had the Sue L. Robinson decision coming down in the Sean Watson situation. You had Bill Russell passing away and then his number being retired league wide. And yeah. we, had a, we had a very big uh, moment in August where we got to talk with Anthony Volpe and uh, where we got to talk to Anthony Volpe and uh, Austin Wells, two very big uh, catchers, I mean, uh, prospects in uh, the Yankee system. Yeah, August was quite a month. Like I said, Bill Russell was a major loss to the NBA community, uh, one of the best players of all time. Now, obviously, we're always going to say Michael Jordan is the go to the sport, but Bill Russell, I think, meant Bill more Russell to... Bill Russell was the best uh, elimination game person ever, player ever. I think he won the most championships of all time, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. um, 
but he wasn't just he he was on the court and off the court as equal. Like he was a great competitor, but a great off the court activist activist as well. Also, we talked about the Deshaun Watson situation again. I mean, that was kind of the running dilemma of this whole entire year. Um, and then, like you said, we had MLB trade deadline. The Padres were very active at the trade deadline. And again, it kind of followed them suit in the off season when they tried to spend $400 million and no one wanted their money. Um, Otani, we talked about that as well. Uh, you know what this a- month also had, Nick? What? The Fernando, just speaking of Padres, the $400 million, the Fernando Tatis situation. Oh, for crying out when loud. When he got suspended. I told you. What did I tell you? I, I know it might have been a dumb take at the time, but it ended up working in my favor after all that. Yeah, but you know what? They still can't get any forgiveness of the contract, so they'll still owe him all that money over a significant amount of years. So they're screwed either way. Unless they can prove that he was being negligent, then you're right. They're going to be stuck with that ridiculous like $300 plus million uh, unless, contract. Unless, unless the rumors are true that they're going to trade Fernando Tatis to the Yankees. Oh, but whoever started that rumor like deserves to be smacked in the back of the head. Um, <laughs> oh, hang, also, on, hang on. I can help with that, Nick. <laughs> hang on. I could do that. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, also, also, along with the Bill Russell story, you had the Jersey retirement, which was well earned, by the way. Um, then for the rest of the NBA, you talked about Durant remaining with the Nets. <clears throat> He's a hypocrite in every way, shape or form. <laughs> and I will say that forever. I, and I'm the biggest Net fan there is. And I'm calling him a hypocrite. I mean, this man wants to he can't lead a team by himself. When he was with the Warriors, that was Steph Curry's team, even though he wanted it to be his team badly. Then he goes off to the Nets, think it's going to be his team, and he goes with Kyrie Irving, which that's a whole nother situation in its, uh, in its own right. The Nets are a disappointment. They're a disappointment, and dare I say it, a dumpster fire. Um, and then with the Knicks signing Barrett, I think that was probably the best move they made. Not dealing The, the Jazz were playing the Knicks. And everybody's shit before him. You knew that Danny Ainge, of all people who took over as the lead executive with the Jazz, was never going to trade him to the Knicks. They they traded and Cleveland, I think, gave less in value technically. Yes. Yep. I, I I don't know. July and August were weird months. Yeah, very weird. Also, one other last thing uh, looked over. Uh, we also, August heading into September, because technically September was when the U.S. Open happened, but August was when she made the announcement. We said goodbye to a legend of tennis and Serena Williams. Yeah, I mean, I grew up playing a lot of tennis, so I would follow the Williams sisters. I watched every single major for the most part for many years until this whole COVID situation kind of turned me off to tennis. Uh, but Serena Williams will always be at the top of the sport in one way, shape or form. I don't know if she's the greatest tennis player of all time, but I think she's one behind the record or she's tied for the record right now in majors. I think with 24, um, her antics on the court were very frustrating in some aspects, including the, uh, incident with the umpire. I think ironically at the U S open, uh, where she threatened to take a tennis ball. Well, to a line judge, so, like, she's got her moments, but she will always be at the top of the tennis so all, the, all the pluses outweigh any of the minuses that ever could have happened. Right. And, th- and there was a lot of tennis players that retired. I know we didn't really get into this, but, like, Roger retired. Roger Federer, Serena retired. Well, let me take that back. Serena is saying that she's walking away. She's not. A, she's she's pulling the Bernie Williams. Where she she doesn't want to say she's officially retired. All right, but that's uh, July and August in a nutshell. Let's look back on those clips. When we come back, we're going to have a look at September and October. When you talk about the Avalanche, guys, even though the Panthers were the number one team in the uh, in the whole NHL, the Avalanche were number one in the West, number two overall, but I really saw them as more of a favorite over the Panthers. I mean, this goes back to what I've been seeing for weeks and what I said in the minute the night that they did win, I mean, the morning after they won the uh, championship. Rantanen, McKinnon, Kadri, McCarr, all 80 point, 80 plus point players during the regular season. They had a great 
speedy, hit them hard offense. And it was that speedy, hit them hard offense that won these guys the cup. And, and credit has to be given to all the patience and all the suffering that they had to go through to finally get to this point. And I, I got to tell you, I mean, I think that the Avalanche have now emerged as the force in the West. You, know, you remember for a, couple, for a couple of years, it was the Kings. And then maybe it was San Jose for a year. And then maybe they were they were even uh, talking about the Ducks maybe making a comeback, which hasn't happened since 2009. Um, so I think that they are now the team to beat in the N in the NHL. Regardless of whether they are champion or, or whether they had won the championship or not, they are the force in the West. It's going to go through them, the path to the Stanley Cup for the next couple of years. Kevin Durant is technically under a four-year contract with the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets are doing this out of the fate complete of their hearts. Okay, they're everyone seems like they want to satisfy KD. I don't get this. So the Warriors satisfied KD when he wanted to leave OKC because OKC was a nightmare when the first technical big three, if you want to call it, of Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and KD were together and they could never get over the hump when this is what proves that big threes don't work unless you're LeBron James and you lead the heat and you've figured it out that way. KD is not a leader. He's a follower everywhere he goes. First of all, when KD went to Golden State, that's it was embarrassing. Well, it was no, but right. But at the same time, it was the embarrassment of riches in Golden State. Okay. They could have won. They still could have won. Now, everyone's saying, now I agree with what some people are saying that they wouldn't have even uh, competed in the Cleveland series if they didn't have KD. That's all true. But at the same time, they all could have won. Imagine what the Nets are going to get for KD. It's going to be unbelievable. Plus, whatever they're going to get for Kyrie. Now, <laughs> excuse me, the other idiots out there who call themselves NBA fans are saying, well, it's not a big deal. Just trade them to the highest bidder. It's not that simple. It's not that simple because there are NBA rules that need to be followed. And for some reason, I think the NBA is the most complicated when it comes to salary and trade demands. The Timberwolves, now I get why they did it. Because now you have uh, uh, KAT, Carl Anthony Towns, and uh, Rudy Gobert. Now, usually it's not two big men who team up to be on a team. That was kind of confusing to me. But Minnesota is a massive contender now in a big way. Oh, the, yeah, the balance. The balance. <laughs> and, 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 but I don't understand why Utah thought that this was a good idea. Because, one, they couldn't afford both guys. They just they can't. It, it's they have two big guys there. They can't afford them. And two, Rudy Gobert is a headache and an ego guy in the locker room. Oh, why does it always seem though? Every time we talk about the NBA, it's always somebody's ego. Now, Donovan Mitchell is a way better. My, off, my God, offensive you think player. this was a group therapy session for Bond villains for God's <laughs> sake. It is. It that's what it feels like. Um, but like I said, Donovan Mitchell is a thousand times the offensive player that Rudy Gobert is. Now, I know he won Defensive Player of the Year, and he blocks shots and all that stuff, but he's not an offensive player. I don't understand this haul that Utah, I mean, that uh, Minnesota gave up to Utah to get Rudy Gobert. Just look at the list, and they even gave up the number 22 overall pick they had in the draft this year. And look at the amount of picks. So at a certain amount, so a certain amount of time, I, I think it's pretty obvious that crazy is going around in the NF in, in the in the NBA because craziness. The, yeah, because because either owners have lost their minds, players have lost their minds, or maybe it's a combination of both. No, well, it's, it, it, in the NBA, first of all, it's different than the NFL. The NBA, most of the league competes, except for teams like maybe Sacramento. <laughs> well, sometimes Sacramento thinks it can compete. Sacramento, Charlotte, those teams down in the lower end, they can't compete. They just have to. Sacramento to trying to compete at this stage is me coming on this podcast and saying, hey, I'm off to climb a mountain now. They had no right to say that they were going to, you know, 
have to another team would have to take on all of that money because the issue is the teams already knew the teams already knew that Baker wanted out. Everybody knew about the contract that they gave to Sean Watson. Everybody kind of knew about the sour grapes between Baker and the team that the Browns thought they had, the Browns thought they could have some say. They really did not have any say whatsoever. I believe it or not. I actually don't think that I was wrong. I actually think that the Browns are just being the Browns and they just said, you know what? We don't want to deal with Baker anywhere. The Panthers did win this trade because Baker. They did. Think about, think about but no, think they about did. This, no, Actually, no, no. Look, Nick. I disagree. But wait, listen. I disagree. Either team won this trade. The Panthers won, but I think there's a bigger winner than the Panthers. Yeah. I so, think there's a bigger but, winner. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Yeah, Baker Mayfield. <laughs> and and that, that, that leads me to my next point that I thought you guys were going to hate me for. Well, wait a minute. Baker wait, wait, wait. Wait, before you go there, I just want to say I agree with you, Nick. I think the Panthers won this yes. in a landslide. I think they won this because they're not paying most of the contract. Yeah, they're, they're, everything and, else is gravy. And they did they did what you're supposed to do at a trade. They upgraded their position. Think about it. Baker barely, Mayfield, but they did. Baker barely, but Baker Mayfield's better than Sam Darnold. He's better than I mean Corral's still a rookie. Baker's basically going to be grooming him for next year but, but he's not the they, starter yet it's a right. it's a competition correct but all you had to do was give up a fifth round pick well this is the Browns saying to baker mayfield turning down 440 million dollars the he biggest contract to... wait a minute the biggest contract in mlb history bigger than a rod's contract and you know what i respect him for it i don't I do because he wants to go to a contender. He does not want to happen to him what happened to Bryce Harper, where he stuck, you know, millions and millions of dollars, one of the highest paid players in the sport, and he isn't competing on a championship team. Same goes for Mike Trout. I'm going to double down a claim, guys. I'm remember when we were talking about Judge weeks ago having this little fight, and I said, you know what, Mike Trout and Bryce Harper kind of ruined baseball a little bit. I'm going to double down on that. I think they've ruined the game. And they've ruined it. That's why you're seeing guys chase after the money more because those two set the precedence. I mean, don't throw tomatoes at me, but I think Mike Trout is a bust. Um, I don't go as far as say a bust. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, but yeah, he's he's, he's the, going but, to get. Yeah, it's like but a unless he riddle. gets unless he gets traded, I will give you that. Unless he gets traded, he's going to win zero World Championships. Well, yeah, yeah, he's going to do amazing things, but no one's ever going to hear about it outside okay. of Los Angeles. What does Mike Trout have? He hasn't even been to a World Series. Because he's never gotten the chance, But because baseball is not a one-man sport. Correct. No, he's actually correct. And, well, we're going to touch on the Angels in just a little bit over some new rumors that have been uh, developing as of late. But Again, I, I kind of respect Juan Soto for doing this because he is saying it's not all about the money. Now, you are correct. Will this actually come to fruition, the, a trade? You know, it, it seems like it has to because if you're turning down this, then what what's it going to take from this organization? However, you do bring up a point with KD, with the KD comparison that – what are the Nationals going to ask for? Because they're going to ask for a lot. I would assume they have to ask for major league ready talents and top prospects in a system. This is guilty written all over it. And if the NFL and Sue Robinson, who now makes me think she's the dumbest person in all of judgment, that she's going to let this fall on the wayside of two to eight games, it makes me question the NFL hierarchy as a whole. Nope. You guys are going to hate me then. Because guess what? With this, congratulations, NFL, you lose. You lose. Yeah. What did we say was going to happen? The NFL's lack of discipline, the, the lack of taking a stand against all these different crime, against all these different allegations and all these different controversies that the owners have embroiled themselves in from Jerry Jones to Robert Kraft getting a feel in the massage parlor and, <laughs> and participating in, in what's not funny, sex trafficking. Well, right. And and going all the way back to 2014 with Ray Rock, congratulations. Everything has now come back to bite you in the ass. And guess what? If Deshaun doesn't get a year, guys, you're going to hate me for this. 
oh fucking well, you did this. Uh, uh, yeah, that, but that's the insidious thing about these decisions because you don't think about it at the time. God, I mean, God knows I didn't, but uh, these things set precedent. They do, especially if you're thinking at it from about it from a legal standpoint. And these right things, now, yeah, it's going to come back and bite you. If you want, no, no, no. If you want Deshaun to get the one year suspension, Roger Goodell should come out at this very minute and announce Dan Snyder is banned from the National Football. It's League. never going to happen. And we all know. It's never going to happen. And guess what, no Nick? You're going to have to settle for the shit of Deshaun Watson getting four games. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 again, because it's I always... feel bad, and I don't want anybody taking. Over. I feel bad for the women, but guess what? That's life. The NFL, the NFL, the, the, the don't, NFL don't, really doesn't care about them. Yeah, they, I was going to say, don't blame the. I mean, blame the but don't fully blame him. Look at your look at your commissioner. Well, oh Roger yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I was waiting for that. Well, but again, who exactly? Uh, we know who. We know who Roger Goodell is actually protecting. We know who he's actually who he's actually acting as the bulletproof vest for. Utah is not a free agent destination. Can you agree with me on that? It's yes. not. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so the only way Utah can really do anything is through the draft and making trades. Okay, so that Rudy Gobert trade to this day, my jaw dropped with the amount that returned in that trade. I think more is going to get returned in a Donovan Mitchell trade than a Rudy Gobert trade. I mean, I think the Knicks, I, I think Dolan is itching to pull the trigger on this one. I, and I say Dolan because he's actually the one in charge. It's not, it, it, it's not, uh, what's his name? <laughs> what, Leon Rose? Leon Rose. It's not actually Leon Rose in charge of things. It's First actually, of all, the man behind the curtain is actually Jim, guitar Jimmy Dolan. <laughs> First of all, if I'm doing this trade, I would tell James Dolan, stay the fuck away from any trade negotiations I'm making. Oh, That's that ship number one. That, that, that ship sailed a long time ago. <laughs> if James Dolan gets involved, he's going to, he'll give up Madison Square Garden in the trade as part of the Donovan Mitchell <laughs> trade. What's he going to do? Go to the Nets? <laughs> no, it's going to be Mitchell Square Garden. It's going to, you're right. See, the irony is, the irony is, I think his father works for the Mets organization, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's a huge I, Mets fan. So, but I think he works in, in the organization for the Mets. So I think he's he's also from New York. I think, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> so it makes sense if he ends up in a Knicks uniform. But you're basically trading away everything. You're gonna have to start from scratch, essentially, to end up with a star. Which we end up exactly <clears throat> where we began. Time is circular, uh, guys. That's okay. Same, Same old, old Knicks. Knicks. And by the way, I never thought I was going to say this, but New York basketball is now in the shitter. Yeah. Now. <laughs> you been, man? No, no, I'm including both. I'm going to go to my students and say, "Hey, see, even quarterbacks have to do their homework." <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, yeah, yeah, that's what you say. <laughs> the one thing I you have you have let the bag in uh, for the teachers. You have given the teachers an avenue now. <laughs> the one thing I was going to say is how much home you should be thanking him. I was going to say, how much homework does it take to be mobile with your feet? Not much. Well, yeah, but th that's exactly it. Apparently, they thought it's a big problem, and it's the big well, thing holding him back from being great. Well, guys, you know what this reminds me of? Remember the story that came out in 17 or 18 about Jamarcus Russell, the infamous first-round bust of the 2007, I think it was, draft from mm -hmm. the Raiders, that basically they gave him tapes to watch and... He said when he told them it was something about plays, I forget what the exact phrasing was, but that in reality, those tapes were blank. A homework clause? Is it football or is it school? Uh, yes. Apparently, they had to turn football into school for him to be for him to be considered great in their eyes. Well, let me ask you something. If Kyler Murray was not there right now, what would the Cardinals be? Well, well, considering that you're not going to have DeAndre Hopkins for eight games, or I mean, six games. Six, yeah. Six games. Uh, Backwards. Not too much. So yeah. let, let's put it this way. Kyler Murray had all the leverage in this situation. Whether the Cardinals are willing to admit that or not is a whole different issue. Is he worth $46 million a year? Hell no. Well, remember, you talk about leverage, though. The team did kind of try to make it up to him by getting Mar uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown from the Ravens, who actually is going to be starting this, starting training camp on the NFI list. 
Right. And, that, and see, the whole thing is he's not worth $46 million, but here's how the NFL works. And most people who are fans don't get this. Either you're a yes or a no team. And what I mean by yes or no team is either you have a quarterback that you can compete with or you don't have a quarterback and you fail and you go 3-14 and 14 and you miss the playoffs. Minnesota with Kirk Cousins. Is Kirk Cousins the best option? No. But does Kirk Cousins get to the playoffs every year? Yes. Not every year. Almost he, every year. Remember what he did after that first Wall Street Journal? He basically came out on SmackDown, had that very weird, unnecessary appearance, went backstage, said, fuck him. Vince is not the kind of guy to just go away. This Basically, this is our answer to what caused him to just go run away. And here it is. Because Vince, I think, finally realizes that if he stays around, it's just going to cause <clears throat> more trouble for for his company. I think Vince kind of willingly pissed it away, uh, pissed it away though, because again, we've looked the we as a collective, I'm saying, have kind of looked the other way at all the crazy, immoral shit that he's well, done over the past thirty well, years. Again, again, it's like what I said a because couple of weeks Vince ago. The character, like I said, no, not just him, but because it's. Wrestling. It's silly. It's wrestling. It's silly. It's silly. Who yeah. cares about wrestling? And again, again, I will make my point like I did a couple weeks ago. I don't care if it's a character or not. It's still serious what's going oh, on okay. here. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely serious. And, That's and, my, and, my point. And again, and this isn't 1992. This isn't 1990. It's 2022. You can't do any of the stuff that he was able to get away with anymore. It, it finally will, all caught up found to out. him. You will be found out. And honestly, and honestly Nick, sorry. But one thing, because uh, we're talking about him being in the ear of everybody, you know, in the ear trying to with something like this. I don't know if that's capable anymore. This finally might have done it that he's done. He's out. And you know what? <clears throat> and you know what? And Nick and I have had this conversation. And I'm sure we've all had this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who hates cancel culture for certain aspects, because certain things like in the com comedy world, canceling people is getting kind of effed up and stupid. But in this case. He deserves to be canceled for half the shit that he's I done. Mean, it's not really can it's not really cancel culture, it's more consequence culture. Like well, I like I keep saying, because you keep doing these things and trying to sweep them under the rug. Well, he's been well look, I mean, look at it, guys. He's under investigation by the feds for the second time in a 30 year span. Like I told you guys before, you know, I feel really bad for the women, but the NFL has been kind of shooting itself in its own in its own case. But then, and you remember this from Monday, Nick Morgison, a report came out that the Sean Watson's representatives are upset about this and feel he should have gotten nothing. Really? Uh, of course. Even though the Browns went went ahead and said that he felt remorse over what over what had happened. Remor like okay, Nick. That's no, sorry, sorry. But remorse. Meanwhile, we have footage coming out of Brown's camp on that day where people, are, including his own teammates, are cheering because this was mentioned on first take. I think even maybe Sarah Spain kind of hinted at this. One of the women who's been really spoken at that basically the NFL is using this thing, using Sue Robinson as a way to say, "Oh, don't blame us." Don't blame when in us. Fact, She's when in fact, the one with the decision, right? When in fact, the only reason we have this is because of precedent, as I just, as I've been repeating, where you fucked up. And by the way, oh, you I... hired by the way. And then you know what the best part is? Like you mentioned, Nick Morgison. <laughs> They can appeal this, and it goes to Goodell anyway. So, really, she's a – no, but really, she is a recommendation. She's not the law. She's not the law. She's – what is it, judge, jury, and executioner? She's right. not – any of them. She's, but, not, for, she's not Kennesaw Mountain Landis. No. It, it, it's, <laughs> no, I'll do you one better. It, it's like Scooby-Doo. We think it's Sue Robinson, but then she takes out the – it's Roger Goodell. Roger <laughs> Goodell. Joey Otani ends up staying with the Angels. Apparently – the Yankees were in the lead. White Sox and Blue Jays had made inqu inquiries, but so, but ultimately, well, let me be clear. Uh, Art Marino and company constantly flip flop or, or during the week. First, it was Otani's not hitting the market. Now it's we're hearing on ev we'll hear on anybody but Otani. We'll hear on anybody, including Otani, and then Otani completely off the market. Can we just admit already that Otani was never for sale? But yeah. Yes, but I think you had every opportunity to blow it up. First of all, the Yankees were never making a deal for the Angels. No, I'm sorry, I don't believe it. Uh, apparently, uh, apparently, Cashman was making a very competitive time offer out. for him. Time out, time out, time out. <laughs> it's not a matter of other teams trying to get. It's a matter of 
what is wrong with the Angels? Because let's be honest, they suck. Let's they're a train honest. wreck. They're, they're a, a train wreck. wreck. Yes, they're a train wreck. They have all this money that they're spending, and it's getting them nowhere. If there is ever a time to have value on a guy like Shohei Otani, on a guy like I know Mike Trout's contract is ridiculous, but just for player for a guy like Trout, like now was that time. And instead, you're just going to hold on to him because we're really just going to build around him. You have tried that and tried that. And guess what? You consistently fail. You're not far behind the A's. Like the A's are slowly catching up to you to bring you to last place in that division. And are you beating Houston? No. And even though we mentioned Seattle and Castillo, you know, Castillo's not the full answer to them. But are you being Seattle? I'd say no to that either. No to that too. Seattle, so, Seattle is way over the top of them. I look right. at them at this so, point. So if you're the Angels, you're in no man's land at this point. I can appreciate the the balls on AJ Preller to to uh, to pull this off because again, this is probably the biggest um, trade return I've ever I think I've ever seen in my life. Right. But I will admit it is a little risk. A lot of your top prospects like Mackenzie Gore and uh, James Wood, you sent them over. Oh, it's, they it's just a, they depleted the farm system completely. They, they, still, they still have some good prospects, but like Nick Videra said, even if it's not either this year or even if you got next year, one of these next two years, you got to win. You got to yeah, be the world. And, it, and, it, and think about how much, the, how, how far the, Nat, the Nats farm just took a jump. They were 24th, <laughs> I think, uh, yesterday morning. <laughs> they probably fifth. went from they probably went from twenty fourth to the top five. They're, they're, fifth. Go. they're fifth now, I believe. And now, okay. No, I was gonna say, and actually, if we're gonna talk prospects and we're gonna talk competitive guys, do you remember the Padres were in the discussion for Max Scherzer last year and lost out to the Dodgers? Yeah, that was imagine, the deal. Ima- no, but I was saying, imagine if the Padres had won Max Scherzer and sent some of those prospects away. They would have made the deal, right? They like now, instead, this year the Dodgers and the Dodgers ends up be end up being one of the big losers of this trade deadline. Now, having just, gotten only a slightly used Joey Gallo from the Yankees, <laughs> just to put another target on the Padres before the COVID shortened twenty twenty season, when the Padres faked their way into the playoffs. Um, do you know what year? Without looking, and I I kind of looked this up, but I kind of knew it too. Do you know what year they made the playoffs before twenty twenty? Nineteen ninety eight. No. Well, that was their last World Series. That was a that was their last World Series appearance. I'm talking about the last time they made the playoffs. I, early 2000s, though. 2006. He's the thing that champion the champions are made of, it. and it, it's reading about, especially in the days since he's passed away, uh, the things that he had to deal with in terms of dealing with racism from from the from the media, from the fans growing up and growing up in the Jim Crow South, and the fact that he was able to become a legend and an activist. It, yeah, and an activist, but it didn't. And nothing came easy to him, but but he still was able to not only just just survive, but 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 thrive. It, the thrive. fact that he was not just uh, thrive, be one of the greatest of all time. He is one of the greatest basketball players of all. If there, there, there's even an argument that he may be the best. Well, I was about to say you could argue he's probably one of, the, uh, if not the best, uh, legend in the NBA. Yeah, e- even if you want to have a debate about, you know, who is the best and include some modern guys, you know, include a, a LeBron and MJ, a Kobe, include a Wilt, include a Larry Bird. But you, but in terms of the best, in terms of both playing ability and as a person and what you had to deal with and what he advocated for, you, it is the most fairest of all arguments to say that he is the best. He was... Kind of baseball, kind of basketball's Jackie Robinson. Even though there was only there was more than one superstar black player, that was yeah, but with him. But Bill Russell, by the way, who became the first black head coach as well, became an activist for uh, through the sport. Did a lot of work. Uh, Two time NCAA champion, by the way, uh, fifty five straight wins in college. Uh, Olympic gold medalist, I think. Also, um. This guy, we're not talking about just career. We're talking about decorated career. The NFL kind of also screwed itself over. It screwed itself over when they, she, Sue Robson questioned, oh, what's this thing here that says owners have to be held to a higher standard? And the NFL just went, ignore that. They shot themselves in the foot. I mean, I'm going to say it again. And of course, when I said it last time, it broke Nick completely. But my point is, 
when you have an owner that's getting craft services under the table again, and you're not going to give him the suspension, how are you? You can't give Deshaun about, the suspension. And I'll go to what I said on Monday. How about the fact that Dan Snyder is testifying in front of Congress? Vince McMahon is test had to, you know, is being investigated by the feds for the second time in 30 years, and he just lost his wrestling promotion. We're talking about Sue Robinson, how she, basically saying trying to change the culture, but doing it so, you know, in too quick of a motion. I know that does sound stupid, but it sounds like a technicality, is what it sounds like. Well, and, and yes, it kind of is, but I'm going to dispute that in that. Guys, I think the culture wasn't going to change anyways. But who asked her? Yeah. Time yeah. Out. No, 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 no. You guys, you guys shut up. I'm not done. You guys, I'm not done. Because guess what? Dan Snyder should not be owning a football team at this point. Robert Kraft very arguably should not be owning a football team at this point for dealing with sex trafficking. Okay, but you're talking about the owner's no, club. No, no, no. But that, Nick, but that's my point. The culture is still there. But wait a even minute. If you Whether it if is you player this, or owner, it's the same. I, I'm even actually, if you suspend this Sean for a year, it's still there. No, I, and I'm actually helping your argument with what I was about to say. Sorry, that, but I needed to get that off my chest. <clears throat> Who asked Sue L. Robinson to change the culture of the NFL? That's not the job yeah, she was there to be not, doing. Yeah, that's not what she was intending to do. And, Her, and it seems like the only excuse she didn't bring out a, a heavier sentence is because he didn't throw it. <clears throat> do he didn't? They didn't do it. Through quote unquote official, uh, but no, do it by the book. Roger says the evidence supports that you know the NFL's desire for the one year plus suspension <laughs> and that'd be fine, which leads me to that. Let's say Harvey is going to give the one plus year suspension and, and a hefty fine. But what about the one you put out, uh, before while, while we're during this before this recording? You put out something about Jeff Legwald via Adam Schefter that there's quote predatory behavior and egregious. That's what I mean by uh, the evidence. So, that's that's what I mean by the evidence. If that's the case, oh god, th this case is going to drive me to drink. You know, no, you, you know <laughs> why? You know why? Because again, after all the screw ups the NFL have had from Ray Rice to Greg Hardy to the current situation with the owners. They are take they took Sue L. Robinson essentially as a you know a blame deflector as a shield you could say. Oh, brother, and this guy stinks. I know we went through the pomp and circumstance of bringing you here, but you know what? We're just gonna disregard. We're just gonna disregard <laughs> everything you said because we didn't have the balls to actually create actually create a a a, a can. A punishment policy Not, that was worth a also, also, wait a minute. Guys, yeah. Sorry. I was like, also, but we're also forgetting something in the constant weeks we've been talking about this. They only brought five cases, five of the women, to Sue L. Robinson. And one of them, actually, the case was thrown out. So just four women. What about the other 20? Because they don't care. The NFL, and by the way, people forget this as well. Roger Goodell is a lawyer. A, a lawyer. But again, they, they spent so, so, you know, they spent so much time trying to say, well, there's nothing, well, there's nothing we can do. And, and now all of a sudden you want to act like Johnny Law when, <laughs> again, you spent, like I keep saying, you spent the better part of 15 years sticking your finger. Actually, no, you didn't stick your fingers in your ears. You put pencils in your ears and then both, th both thumbs were jammed up your ass. Talk about a female tennis legend who... Uh, started in the 90s as a teenager, playing over 30 plus years in an individual sport, which is tough to compete in. This is not a team sport where you get help. And even, the, you know, even even taking, you know, the early part and the early part of her career was, you know, she was with her sister. And, and the fact that they were both able to do what they did and they both were able to carve out um, car, carve out an identity. That was unique for the both of them, but they I started. wouldn't wait a minute. I think you're being a little too small about it. Ca not carving out an identity, uh, knocking through the door and creating an identity that's never been seen before. Yeah, re redefining the boundaries of what's possible in women's te in tennis, not even women's tennis, in tennis period. A lot of people have been saying like she's kind of moved on, and she said it in the Vogue magazine piece, not a sports. Uh, Entity, not ESPN, not Fox, not SI, Vogue. I just, I, 
That was confusing to me. Please tell me you thought that was confusing. Yeah, it, it was. It was confusing. But you know what? These things are. That's tennis. That that's well, tennis. For you. I was gonna say. I think part of that's also just how much of a star she has become. That the Williams sisters kind of go past tennis. Like we'll talk about Conor McGregor later. But when I always say that Conor McGregor surpasses the UFC, the Williams sisters kind of surpass tennis. They are in the mainstream. Yes, they were always tennis stars, like we were saying, but they have kind of surpassed it. talking about prospects and top prospects and the title sometimes the pressure that will come to it in terms of getting you got performing in the minors getting you guys up to the bigs do you feel sometimes the pressure will worry you at does the pressure of being a top prospect worry you at times or is it something you don't think tend to think about yeah i don't i don't necessarily think of it that much just because while it's nice for people on the outside to consider you a top prospect, it's not something that I necessarily ever work towards. I work towards being on the Yankees and helping them win World Series. And I just feel like there's a long way to go for me to get to that place and get to where I want to go. So um, regardless of what anyone thinks on the outside, the work never really stops. And there's a long way to go for not just me, but every single guy on our team, because that's everyone's goal. No one's goal is to just be a top prospect. And um, like I said, it's definitely nice and an honor to be recognized. But at the end of the day, um, it's not really what I work work towards. I don't want to just be considered a top prospect. Yeah, I agree with Anthony. Um, I mean, if any, like it, if anything, there's no pressure. It's just higher expectations. And I think that's just a, a great addition to going out there to play every day with high expectations. I mean, I know we both have very, very high expectations for ourselves each time we step on the field. So um, I'd rather, I'd rather prove to myself that I can handle expectations and, and do more than that. And I think that just having that label of a, of a prospect just creates even more expectation for people on the outside. So um, I'd rather be on the end of, like over exceeding expectations than under exceeding expectations. So yeah. I think, uh, I think it adds that. So Anthony, obviously the trade deadline, I'm sure you've heard many rumors and many speculation about your name being floated around, obviously not getting traded, but did the thought of potentially being traded at this past trade deadline, especially if the Yankees were looking at a Soto or an Otani, what, what crossed your mind during the trade deadline rumor? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, for me, it was kind of like my second year in it, and I have a really good um, support system with my family and friends and um, the people who kind of not shield me, but they, they tell me what's kind of real and what's not. And both years, they just told me to shut off my phone, and if anything came up, they let me know. So it honestly wasn't too stressful for me, only just because I was around friends and just playing every day. That was kind of the best part about it was we had a job to do every night and we were competing to win every night. So when you have a clubhouse of as close as we are and everyone's just in the present moment, you kind of can you'd be able to tell if guys were kind of checked out and worrying about stuff that really, really we have no control over. So um, it wasn't, it, I guess I'm kind of different in the fact that it, I super had no control over it, so I wasn't really too worried about it. Good on the NBA. Respect to the NBA. 11 championships. First black head coach or coach. Uh, 21 and 0 in elimination games. Which is insane. That that That's like unheard of today. I mean, this guy is a legend. This guy won 11 out of 12. And, and was such an advocate off the, off the court as well. Right. I mean... And I mean, he presented the Larry O'Brien trophy at the end of every NBA finals for crying out loud. I think about it. Think all that he did in Boston and yet people in his generation saw him. They didn't welcome him. Well, we're talking about a much different era. Oh, a we're much... Talking, yeah, we're talking. I know. About, yeah, we're we're talking. We're talking about not, not the microaggression, you know, sometimes subtle, sometimes not racism. We're talking. We're talking about. Oh, my God. But we're talking we're talking about racism to the millionth degree. Like I, I mean, yeah, and, and having to play in that environment and succeed in that environment 
is a Herculean effort, and, and also was able to do it. And also, he won two uh, national titles, also in college. But, I mean, <laughs> you know, a legendary man, and this is a legendary, uh, this is a legendary uh, achievement worthy of such a man. But I will put to you, I don't know if. See, there are very few other players that I think could be because I think they're not only retiring because of what he did on the court; it's what he did off it. Right. That's what Tom said. Tyler is advocate for for social justice. The only other uh, athlete I think that maybe could qualify to have his number retired like that that has that kind of on the on the court, off the court kind of cachet and body of work is probably Magic Johnson. When you go on Dominican radio stations and you're saying, no one's going to watch the sport anymore because my son is the young star and no one's going to watch. Yeah, because we don't have any other stars in MLB besides Fernando Tatis. Oh, and um, uh, Shohei Otani and uh, Aaron Judge <laughs> and uh, let's see, Max Scherzer. Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman. Uh... Bryce Aaron Harper, Br- Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper when he's Harper, healthy. Mike Trout. Uh, can I go on? <laughs> I mean, let's put it this way: his father is acting so delusional right now. Now I get it because he's defending his own son, and I understand it. And there's three hundred and forty million dollars on the table. But when, but when your when your child is wrong, you know maybe it sounds rich coming from me not having a kid. But when your child is wrong, you tell them that they're wrong. Now we can have this debate all we want <sighs> about the Hall of Fame. The fact that David Ortiz is somehow in the Hall of Fame, despite the fact there's no A-Rod or Bonds or Clemens. We can have that debate till the cows come home. But my point is the fact that he is, that the fact that uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. tested positive PEDs and has a, had this kind of disastrous year, you know, he uh, at the age of 23, he's already determined that he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame ever. He had Basically, his own yeah. At least A Rod was twenty seven when he started taking. You know, he was already. Yeah, but he was already. You know, a certified I, superstar. I, I, no, Nick, the next Rangers. One Nick, second, Nick Morrison. One. I'm sorry. No, no. Okay. I want to say what Nick. Vida, I think what Nick Vida is trying to say is that it's sad because now we're going to see this talented, nearly once in a generation player playing, and for what? It's going to be for nothing. I don't you know. Could still, you could still want a ring, and people won't take it. People can't take that away from you. By the way, I don't know if I would technically consider him a one generation talent as of yet. He hasn't played enough to be a one generation okay, okay, talent. No, no, my point is he's a great. Listen, talent. He's still got a high ceiling. That that's what Tom is saying. But the I, one I, different, I, in other words, in, well, what I'm saying Nick, is he's kind of destroyed his ceiling. He's now in force mode to be with the Brooklyn Nets roster. How do you go all of a sudden from saying, I'm pissed off, I'm going to cause a ruckus, which we reported last week, to, right. I'm here, I'm going to listen to everybody, Steve Nash is my coach, uh, Sean Marks is my GM, I'm here. Because they're all screwed. Katie's screwed with his contract, they're screwed with the play that they're locked into. Everybody's screwed at this point, so they're making the best of a situation. Now that KD is back, does that mean even with the Lakers giving LeBron the extension, give, putting up the two first-round picks for sale, do you see the Kyrie move still happening? It can't happen now because KD agreed to be back on the roster. So now you're going to want Kyrie there as a number two. If KD was not there and you're basically fire sailing everything, then yeah, you do the trade. And I still don't. And I'll say this again. And I said this to both of you. The Lakers are going to bail out the Nets with two first round picks to take Kyrie Irving. Now, Nick uh, Federer, who's not here this week, made a great joke. Maybe LeBron is enticing him with a, uh, an acting gig for Space Jam 3. I don't see how this would work at the moment, first of all, getting Mitchell, because the Jazz basically came out and said that they wanted R.J. Barrett. So now you basically tabled that. By the way, just because the Knicks wanted to look like they were the winners in this whole situation, Leon Rose came out and put a Monday deadline, this past Monday deadline, on making the trade exactly. being done. Now, I mean, but we've seen, but we've Nick, we've seen in sports where deadlines are put in place and things still happen. Hi, Rob Manfred. Do you know who the last number one uh, first round pick the Knicks signed? Who? Charlie Ward. Alan Hahn reported yesterday uh, on a real, a realistic package for Mitchell. He says he told Michael K. Show Fournier Grimes. 
five picks, and of those picks, three or four would be unprotected. Believe it or not, that's not a bad deal for the Knicks. I if, would do it. If that, I is, do if it. that is true, if that is true, you make that deal. Hell, hell, hell. If you even have to throw in Obi Toppin, I fine. All right. So that was basically the end of the summer, the second half of the summer. And now we enter into the fall months. And well, September, September was basically surrounded by two things, uh, Nick. Uh, there were a lot of headlines for us in September, but there were two big ones. One being the off the court uh, situations in the NBA, one being Robert Sarver, the other being Ime Odoka. And then the punt god, Matt Areza, who had his moment in the sun of the preseason and then had some very serious uh, sexual misconduct rape allegations against him. Yeah, I mean, these headlines, we had to break these down for a while. If I remember correctly, we literally broke down the Areza story like a news story, essentially. Yeah, we multiple, broke it down, multiple, but... angles, multiple angles of it. And actually, multiple of those angles that are mentioned here about how San Diego State, you know, how it, how it was uh, reported to the previous year. And then it just conveniently, nobody at San Diego State even knew about it. So it's like, how did San Diego State manage to hide it for nine, ten months, close to a year? You were uh, you were animate about it. I remember it. So was I. I mean, yeah. the, the weird thing about this story is, well, I don't know what happened. Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? No. Well, uh, I guess it didn't happen then. Thanks. Thanks, administration, for trying to sleep that under the rug. And uh, and the best part and the best part of this whole thing was that the school was basically playing coy, like just all right. Well, we don't, we can't tell you exactly what happened. And then you had the I think it was with the Bills, right? Yeah, uh, in the uh, in the preseason, or and everyone was getting on. Well, was being positive about him because of his kicking ability. And then this whole story comes out, and then you have the alleged uh, rape situation. Uh, well, this was at a frat house, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, right? Party. And like just seeing some of the pictures, like were, whoa, like very eye opening. Uh, and then we had October. And October, we had plenty of good, plenty of bad. We had Pool Holes hitting his 700th home run on Apple TV. We had Darren I, Judge breaking the American League record for home runs. Yeah. I mean, we could spend a whole best of on MLB and their dumbass deals that they made with Apple TV and with uh, Peacock. And because uh, there, and you know what? I heard something interesting. Uh, the other day, since we're doing this now in the in the future, yeah. the present, that they were doing those deals because they were not happy that ESPN walked away from their games during the week and they only want to do the Sunday night games. Well, oh, well, <sighs> of course. Um, so for all the positives that we give to Coach McDaniel down in Miami and now Miami has been having a hell of a year or two is having a hell of a year. They are not quite a bit of righteous uh, criticism in October when Tua uh, had, was in concussion protocol, then played a few days later, got blessed in the head and got stretchered off. I was really animated about that one. I mean, the way that story went, and I just remember, I'm like, all right, those were aggressive hits. There's no way. he Because I think Miami had a short week that week. Yeah, they played on Sunday and then they played on Thursday night football. So, and I think we said, like, there's no way. There's zero chance he's playing. And well, he played, and he ended up getting stretchered off the field. And I just remember seeing the aggressive hit in that game, and I'm just like, hello, this is the whole reason he shouldn't be playing. And then he – wasn't that the game also that he tried to get up to go back to, for the next play, and then he fell that over on, again? That was the Sunday. That was the Sunday game. Oh, that was a Sunday game. But – Yeah. And then I just remember – but he got stretchered off in the second game. You're right. And people were like, now the NFLPA is getting involved in an investigation, and – does the team need to be fine? Does the team need to be in trouble? Well, everything seems to be going well now, now that they're in, uh, probably going to get locked for a wild card spot unless they somehow catch the Bills. But probably No one's catching card. the Bills. Yeah. Um, the punch happened at the start of the NBA season where Draymond Green went up to Jordan Poole and just punched his lights out. I mean, that was a great story. And, I, and let me preface not a great story because of the action. A great story be just because it's like, well, that. But Draymond Green is Draymond Green. Like he knows, <coughs> excuse me, how to make the spotlight happen. I mean, most people 
uh, who know the podcast space. He's got his own podcast on the Volume Network, which is Colin Cowherd's podcast network. Yeah. Um, the man is polarizing, but the man is very entertaining. I can't deny it in that regard. Now, the Warriors look like, in, as we're doing this, are in bad shape. Steph Curry is out for a month at least. Will they make the playoffs? Who knows? Which is funny, which is funny because we also talked about a preview of who is probably the best chance of winning the NBA title. Warriors were one of those teams we mentioned. I think we mentioned the Bucks again, the Celtics again, and the yeah, Bucks. Well, and the Bucks are on track. Yeah, uh, Deshaun ended up getting a, mis- a 25th sexual misconduct allegation, but nothing came of that. Dan Snyder saying that he has uh, dirt on Roger Goodell. That, that was a thing. That was, again, funny for the wrong reasons. That story was just funny because, hey, look, I've got dirt on Roger Goodell. And I felt like say, who doesn't have dirt on Roger Goodell? I'm not surprised. That's why he's in the league for so long. Uh, as Yankee fans, we had a very hard time talking about what could have happened after their loss to the Astros in the ALCS, if Judge was going to resign or not. Even to saying if uh, there were going to be sell the team chance if they did nothing again in the off season like last off season. Well, stuff has happened in this off season, so that ends up uh, being for moot. Um, and also, I'm kind of glad I'm mentioning this list, but Aaron Donald, Jalen Brown cutting ties with Donda Sports after Kanye West controversial comments, which will lead us into a very hectic November and December afterwards. Well. And I'll finish this point off on the Donda Sports story that I guarantee you Aaron Donald and Jalen Brown are thanking their lucky stars considering what has gone on with Kanye since uh, going on Alex Jones' show, which somehow still exists on a website platform somewhere. I mean, when you make Alex Jones draw drop, you probably have done something incredibly wrong. Uh, 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 Kanye, I think that's a little too much. Huh? Wait, Alex Jones said that? I mean, that you, you know when you make Alex Jones, like, scuffle and be afraid that Kanye did something wrong. Yeah. But, All right. So go have a look at those clips. We'll see you after the break on the other side for uh, the last couple of months of the year, which were very hectic. Raping somebody at 16 and 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 is still rape. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Do you have, <laughs> do you have any explanation for the bruises that she left? Well, wait a minute. Because right, even if even if she was, I mean, do you have do you have any explanation as to why that happened? Wait why a she second. Got so hurt? Wait, time out. So when someone says no, that means no, no. Precisely, ladies and gentlemen. Well, precisely, precisely. Oh, god. All right. I, I really would love to know if that guy's soul started leaving. Well, he, he's, he's, he's. But wait a minute. You should so, so have one. Have one. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh. Wait a second. So he's saying that because she could have lied about her age, it led to a misperception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because lying about your age is, you know, the perfect punishment is rape. Just perfect. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. Lied, yeah, you lied about you lied about your age, therefore you deserve it. I'm sorry, Look but oh, the failure. It's really the fault of San Diego State, the university that. This happened in October, and we're just learning about this now. In that they don't take the, they don't take it seriously because their beloved football program that takes precedent over any any woman's any woman's safety. Right. And, There's actually a CBS video from CBS San Diego. Nick Morrison, you'll know the one that I'm talking about, where students are like, basically, what the hell? We're just finding out about this now, and actually, kind of like you implied, uh, Nick Federa. You know, maybe the bills don't look good in that following the reports, it took two days for them to move on from. But how how is everybody finding out so late? They're finding out after they drafted him. Everyone's finding out just now as the NFL season is about to start. This incident took place in October. You had about almost two months that you that you were sitting on this and you just made your decision because again. If it wasn't if it wasn't for the fact that this hit the news, Matt Arisa would still be on this team. Well, I'll I'll go one step further, Nick and Nick, and I'll bring up the point that I made to you guys before. If this was one of the big rookie quarterbacks, like from Josh Allen and his draft class, or a Saquon Bakery, or hey, 
We had a situation just very recently in Cleveland with a quarterback from the from the year prior in Deshaun Watson. And guess what? Despite all those allegations, Deshaun Watson got a bag from the Cleveland Browns. If Matt Ariza was a quarterback or a running back, he, he would, would have I, a I, job. Okay. They but, didn't, yeah, they, uh, they didn't, go ahead. I was just going to say, to go one step back to that story as well, Think about what I said about the contract in year one with the Cleveland Browns. Obviously, the agent was not stupid when he made year one of that contract. Right. And but the that, agent that, that, and the agent had to have known. I mean, right. I'm not in but the fact that Matt Ariza was a rookie punter, despite the fact he could punt a football 85 yards, he's just a punter. We can go get another punter. Yeah, the, they did the calculus and found out that he was expendable. Why is Sarver getting just one year and $10 million when Donald Sterling, when upon the uh, audio evidence of him using the N word multiple times in a conversation was thrown out of the league. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why go to the second banner. So Robert Sarver said the N word, like you just said at least five times when recounting statement of others made sex related, inappropriate comments about physical appearance of females and other inappropriate situations that have gone on so this is actually worse than the donald sterling situation donald yeah, sterling so, donald so, sterling was one situation with one woman i'm thinking that this is partially just like a like a placeholder like that year suspension i'm i'm guessing because that will allow them to do more investigating even more investigating into the situation and maybe he's talking to the owners behind the scenes maybe uh, mr silver is saying hey you know what Maybe we need to get rid of this guy. This guy's been a bully since the time he's entered the league with yeah, the Suns. That, that was the one thing that was made evidently, uh, well, just abundantly clear in the report that this happened the entire time he has owned this team. Systemic but, abuse for a very long time. You can't start a statement as a man of faith after you just dealt with misogynistic, racist behavior. You're going to tell me you're a man of faith? I mean, there's a lot of people who are consider themselves men of faith that act in this way. Need I need I point you to most religious organizations in this country? No, 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 no. Time out. After this whole thing. And by the way, apparently the investigation goes back a good five to seven years now, they're saying. Exactly. So I don't want to hear a man of faith shit coming out but, of his mouth. But, Ro but Robert Sarver is positioning himself as the victim where cancel culture takes another, claims another victim. It's like, you're giving him three, of um, probably three close to $3 billion when everything is said and done. But, yeah, he's canceled a lot. Canceled all the way to the bank. Well, I was just going to say the irony is he's worried about being canceled and he technically got canceled. But there is no, but there is no cancel culture. He's getting three billion dollars for his team. Okay, only, exactly. That's what? not being canceled. Wait, here's the thing, and I totally understand where you're coming from. But it's his team. He's allowed to sell it and make the money back. Exactly. But you're not. But canceling him would involve taking money out of his pocket. Well, you you're can't do that. In. You can't do that. And but unfortunately, you can't do that. I know, no, Nick. But that's <laughs> but that is Nick Federer's point. Is that three billion dollars? You know what I would do with three billion dollars? You would I never would see my fat ass again. Welcome to the future. Yeah, because you can't. You're not going to teach a seventy year old how to operate a smart TV. Okay, Wait. well that goes. No, no, no. Sorry, Nick, but that goes to the point of the problem with MLB and the streaming services because it goes back to what I've been constantly talking about. MLB's audience is generally older, but basically, MLB wants to be. I, you guys know that uh, that meme. Young and where it's hip. The, yeah, it's the MLB wants to be that meme with uh, oh, the old Steve guy. Buscemi. Yeah, Steve Buscemi. Yeah, walking in with the with the uh, skateboard, walking to the How school. Do you do, fellow children? How do you do, fellow kids? Or how Get do you do, all the failure. That's what they want to be. That's why you have this stupid Apple TV deal. That's the why you have these ridiculous rules like the Manfred Man and and all and all of this. But how many know, people? The problem how? is that's not an unattainable goal, but that, but the head moron in charge is coming up with these cockamamie half baked ideas. Wait a minute, ideas, and good old Rob Manfred has just decided to just leak his brain juices all over everything. And you, you know, know what? what? You know what? I'm just going to say it now. It's not that it's not that there's a lack of ideas. It's that 
The I like good the ideas. Suck. Wait a second. I'm going to say it now. Rob Manfred is below Gary Bettman when it comes to commissionership. Yes, yeah, three things come to well come to the forefront. A, this is probably the biggest put up or shut up in a contract year, betting on yourself kind of contract year for an athlete in any sport ever. Two, um, you could tell you could tell how 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 much he was pressing to try and get this. And three, I think that this literally leaves no doubt as to who the American League MVP is. Triple crown be damned, because he's probably not going to get that. But I can, I can care less about the triple crown, though. As long as he gets the MVP, that's all I care. Uh, there are still going to be no, there are still going to be naysayers, though. I swear, if I see one or a group of people show up with Shohei Otani, I will go and punch them in the face myself. Uh, Nick, uh, I I think I would be shocked if I mean if you look at it, I would be shocked if Judge wins this award unanimously. I mean he he should win it unanimously. I think we're all in agreement there, but you know there's going to be a couple of voters that are going to come out and give first place votes for Shohei. There's no point. Shohei has nowhere near the offensive numbers that Aaron Judge has. No, I, I understand that. I think we're all in agreement about that. But you know, there's going to be somebody. I mean, look, there, Derek Jeter was a unanimous Hall of Famer. I mean, he he should have been. I mean, there, it just it just happens. The independent doctor said that he passed, but apparently he did not pass. Yeah, because if he gets fired, then that goes to show you that and maybe that he either missed a step or. Um, or something because I mean that does, that's starting to make sense now that the doctor gets fired in in this spot. But a lot of heads should should have rolled because of this, especially, and it became more apparent when he. I mean, I can't even look at that foot. I can't even look at that footage on th- on the on Thursday night because it's horrifying. No, it's, it was it was frightening Thursday. There's no question. I mean, first off, the whiplash, the the actual hit itself was frightening. Even if anybody was a hundred percent to begin with, and then. Uh, being, him being stretched out like that was just, you know, your heart kind of stopped when you saw that. So the five-step process for the NFL concussion protocol, step one, back to regular activities. Step two, light aerobic activity. Step three, moderate activity. Uh, step four, heavy non-contact activity. And step five, practice of full contact. He should have been out as soon as he got hit, and then he should have not played on the short week. I'm so, he, I, that's the that's the only way that's the only way I can think of it. That's really the only way you can cut it I, because uh, there has to be a systemic failure for that, <laughs> or, or, or a a li- literally everybody important making the important decisions on the team just turning this way simultaneously, just turning their backs. With the regular season in the NBA about a week away from starting up. And Jordan Poole, who was a very integral part of that Warriors championship team last season, uh, imagine if you know Green knocks him out, and we're talking about him being out for a few weeks or even longer because of something like that. And I want to just say a couple of things here because this is some stuff that I've heard about in the past week too. Mm-hmm. You've heard either you've heard from some former athletes and even some some current NBA players saying that. Oh, this kind of stuff happens all the time. It happened back in the 1990s. Let's just get a couple of things out of the way. Number one, it's 2022. So you're going to be – this kind of stuff gets elevated a step higher in 2022. And it's because, you know, TMZ is pretty much everywhere, undercover, full cover, whatnot. And there are cameras everywhere, even if it's not TMZ. So this stuff's going to get out there, things like this happen. And also one other thing too, Tom, and I'll get – and I know you want to jump in. Mm -hmm. If this was anybody else, any other minor player, if this was a minor player, on, and when I mean minor player, you know, like the lesser knowns, like the Juan Toscano Andersons of the world with the Warriors, you don't think that the guy, these guys would have been cut or internally suspended right away? Absolutely. 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 But that's right. where we sit right now with about a week to go in the, before the NBA starts up for real here. And, uh, yeah, so just take all those – Accounts into consideration, and that's why I think that's where we're, we are at here with this story today. They're going to be able to bullshit their way out of this. Well, and they're halfway home to bullshitting their way out of this with Deshaun Watson. Y- yeah, but there's more lawsuits coming out. There's uh, more lawsuits coming, but they won't punish him. How did this other lawsuit come out now after all, all but one of the other ones have been settled? And as far as my point goes... Kind of along the lines that Nick was Nick Federa was going that he's not going to get punished any further because remember something, the NFL 
And even if you want to go back as far as Sue L. Robinson finalized in their in their rulings and in the settlements that Deshaun did something. As much as Deshaun wants to deny and claims his innocence, there are two parties, the NFL themselves and, Desha- and uh, Sue, L., Sue L. Robinson, who have come to the terms that Deshaun, something happened here in which he violated the personal conduct policy. He gave one of those BS PR apologies in front of the media. Like, you know, well, I'm sorry with whatever happened. Why did you, if you think you're so innocent, Deshaun, why did you do it? We know that if any more sexual misconduct lawsuits are, are filed, there could be one more, two more, 10 more, 15 more. It just I, did. God knows with him. But the NFL is not going to want to discuss yeah, but, it. Really but Nick. Again. They are, they have put the mess in the dustpan and they are lifting up the rug and they are waiting to sweep it under. I, I, Jim Ursay's baggage is public. Yes, he got, his inner demons are outward bound. So. He got drunk in public. He got a DUI. He got suspended. He got fined. So and what in God's name could he be hiding? Who knows? But Jim Irsay has his demons, but not because of dumb things like Daniel Snyder. He just has his demons because of vices. Addiction and alcohol. Addiction. Right. Is anybody else morbidly curious about what exactly kind of dirt it is of about. course of and course. Everybody I, I don't, wants to know. and i think nick is more interested in what the blackmail is on roger goodell than it is on the owners oh i, I could i, I could let my i could let my imagination run for our gentlemen we're going to find out roger goodell's secret fetish yes. oh god don't say that it's probably uh. to do with duct tape super glue and boxing gloves <laughs> Oh, so you mean uh, domestic violence hearings that he goes through every other week? Look, I'm not saying he actually shows up to that hearing in his underpants with eating a whole, a huge tub of popcorn, but I'm not not saying that. I'm sorry, Tom, but but he doesn't know how to handle his domestic violence hearings. Are you you comparing him to that uh, gif of Michael Jackson from the Thriller video where he eats the popcorn? Pretty much. (laughs) Can we admit that that letter... Now, this was the updated part of this story. The letter. The letter was ridiculous. They are going to be a great team. Jordan Poole will be fine. Draymond Green's an idiot, but we know he's not going anywhere. Draymond Green's an idiot for punching people, but we know he's not going to get suspended by the NBA because the NBA is not going to investigate anything. Thank you. Yes. I know. Yes. We know Draymond Green punches people. I get it. But Draymond Green, and I know people are going to get mad, but he's the heart and soul of that team. Until someone shows me otherwise, I still think they're the favorite. I look at some of the other teams. The Nets haven't proven anything. Okay, Who, who in the Eastern Conference besides Milwaukee Milwaukee, and and Boston do you uh, – I'm not even Boston well, because I, I don't even know with them anymore. So Nick Federa, I've been reading, you know, doing my research on like previews and stuff. There's a lot of people who are – Hype around Philadelphia. That Philadelphia has a lot of hype, but they have a lot to prove. I agree. James so, Harden. James Harden's got to prove himself. Joel Embiid needs to step up. He's been <laughs> hurt. He's been hurt the past couple of years. This team has a lot of hype. Tobias Harris is another guy who got a large contract. Needs to play better. You don't have to worry about the black cloud of Ben Simmons being on this roster anymore. No, that's the Nets problem. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. the black cloud has settled over your team. <laughs> Kanye's been going after going after black women and, and, and a lot of and a lot of other and a lot of other dark skinned black women for years. He's been saying terrible things, but nobody paid attention because Kanye the genius. His bipolar disorder gives him superpowers somehow. Well he that thinks he's a genius. Not that this is now, a but He's literally repeating blood libel. Not that he's uh, not this is a conspiracy theory that dates back to the middle fucking ages, and you're sticking by him. By the way, not that this is a political show. The man thought he was going to be running for president for crying out loud. Which ended up being a Republican, a right wing nut job up anyway. I told I, I said this to Nick on Beyond, and I'll say it quickly here. Everybody hey. gave him the benefit of the doubt because Kanye, the genius, remember. Well, he's I've, not crazy. He's just smart like a fox. No, he's not. And by the way, I was—I'll say it again okay, quickly. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what they thought. But wait, everyone's using him as a prop. Okay, everyone is using him as a prop because they know he screams and he yells. Yes, they're he, taking advantage of a man who clearly had who clearly is in a mental health crisis. He—he's—he's 
he Wait, believes what he be, uh, Kanye believes even through this I'd say this might be a bad joke but, but, but through this worst of times this PR nightmare that which does not kill him makes him stronger oh my god wow <laughs> and I thought he was going to be the one to make the bad music pun how doesn't spend the money on George Donaldson stays around Hicks stays around maybe they go get a pitcher no that wasn't what I was going with Okay. Should House signs on herself in New York Yankees? It's never going to happen. It, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's going to be in the wind. They, is this, is gonna... this a situation where would you, would you blame? Let me change it. Would you blame fans if they started selling the team chance no. next year? I wouldn't, but at the same time, this this ownership has brought World Series to this organization before. No, I would. Not, I would I not disagree. I disagree because that was still the George era. Okay, but they were working in the organization. George really wasn't running that team at that point. He he was, you know, he was in he was in ill health. So. Okay, oh not oh nine, yes, but oh nine, but that's one World Series. Brian Cashman has regressed, and there's a part of me that doesn't like him still being the GM. I'm not surprised, and I don't blame them because and I and I re- and believe again, yeah, I realize I'm spoiled as hell. So. Right, but I'm saying, but my I'm saying is what happens? Like, would we still be saying these things, guys, if last season? They lost that last game of the season, and the Blue Jays won, and the Yankees missed out on the playoffs on the last day of the season. What happens if next season Judge leaves, and the Yankees go eighty-three and seventy-nine, or whatever? It is? Well, no, the team is fucked if he doesn't sign like, back. Like, no, I'm not, but my my point is, my point is, if it, if they the next three years, eighty-three and seventy-nine, eighty-five and seventy-seven. Well, no, then the Yankee fans are going to burn the stadium down. Now to look at the last two months of 2022, and we're going to start with something I like to call Nets November. So, I made mention of doing the sports. Well, then Kyrie Irving decided to get in on the action with uh, Kanye West. And then, well, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong for the Nets November. The losses, Kyrie's anti-Semitism, whole ranting, the Nets firing Steve Nash after eight games after Joe Sy made peace with them after Kevin Durant wanted him fired and everybody was on board. And then uh, Kyrie's little list that he needed to complete it before coming back after the Nets had to suspend him because the NBA didn't do anything. Uh, and then to top it all off, the fact that they were looking at Ime Utoka as their next head coach for a little while. Yeah, this was a rough month for me as a Nets fan. I mean. I'm an NBA fan in general, but I've been a Nets fan since they've been in New Jersey. I mean, the Kyrie Kyrie promoting anti-Semitism, that's just a no-no in every way, shape, or form. I mean, and he I, I just remember the whole uh scuffle with Nick Fredell, who has been covering the NBA for ESPN for a long time, uh covered the Warriors at one point, covered the Bulls at one point, now is covering the Nets. And he's just trying to ask him a simple question. Why are you promoting a anti-Semitic movie on your social media platforms? And what did he say? He basically is like, uh, move on. You're like, taking away from, from, from you're devaluing me as a person. Oh, uh, dehumanizing. Dehumanizing, he, yes. That was, and I, I hate to say that, but I laughed at that. You're saying that we're dehumanizing you? That That's what you're going to say? When you're dehumanizing a whole race? Yeah. R- right. Good. And then also on top of that, like you said, Steve Nash was fired. Unfortunately, I think I was the only one who said it last season that he should have been fired after the season. That he lasted way longer than I thought he should have. But you couldn't let Kevin Durant win after that whole scuffle in summer. Right. But it's like you say all the time, why do we let the players have the power when they probably shouldn't? true that's the biggest uh, issue the astros won the world series and i like how nick Federa basically finally acquiesced and gave them credit even though he didn't want to and well i mean, I mean obviously as yankee fans we're always going to have that hatred of the astros we always don't, will. and i agree i don't have a problem with him hating the astros the problem i had was and you know this because i've said this many times when it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever he'll find a problem with the astros even if they won single-handedly in dominant fashion he'll still say well it's the astros and i'm like okay they won fair and square you have dan snyder beginning his process of selling the commanders continuing on for now the whole dirt thing is dan snyder's been a big storyline this year 
you uh the attorney general placed on that lawsuit against the commanders in the nfl no updates on that i think but, not as of yet no uh the uva football shooting unfortunately which... yeah we've had quite a few unfortunate headlines in the in the world of yeah. sports i i mean like i said the way this show goes we're not x's and o's we let game on who we like big time on this network johnny and hank are the X's and O's guys when it comes yeah. to the sports. Now, don't get me wrong. We could break games down if we wanted to, but that's not per se the interest we have in that in that point of view. Um, also, uh, as you said, Adam Silver has damaged his reputation as an NBA commissioner. Yeah, well, I think that's stretched back to the Nets. But, uh, yeah. but I think, well, there's some other things. I mean, yeah. Ime Udoko with the Celtics. Um, Robert Sarver. Robert Sarver. And also... Uh, the player for the Spurs, the 19-year-old kid. Oh, uh, Primo. Primo, who decided to not keep it in his pants. Um, but yeah, and then obviously to end that month, Aaron Judge named the AL MVP. After all the scares that we had about maybe Otani. But the baseball writers actually were decided right. I think I, think I had the... I think I had the take of the year when it Los came Angeles to Los Angeles sports writers. I know, I know. Well, LA loose assholes, but I think that one will stand in infamy for a long time. Um, moving on to December, everything happened. Everything. <laughs> uh, let's just say everything happened. Basically, um, OBJ was escorted off his Miami flight. Now people were like, "Was he drunk? Did he take something?" Apparently he was sleeping and and, were, and refused to put his seatbelt on. Uh, and then the whole thing with that. It was weird. Um, but it turns out he wasn't going to sign with the team anyways because apparently he wasn't fully re recovered from that ACL and he had no interest in playing regular season games. Here's the thing. He was never going to sign this year. Can we just put that out there now that he was never going to sign? He was too hurt. What did he have, a torn ACL? Yeah, in the Super Bowl. Okay, that so takes a year. Th that takes a year. There was no way. And by the way, him playing in regular season games this year made no sense at all because he's going to hurt himself again. So it's just one of those things where you're just like, all right, it happens. And then as we keep uh, progressing throughout the month, Busby with the victims attended. Attending to Sean's return. And I just, I'm sorry, but like Tony Busby, you're a jackass. Like, just in every way, shape, or form. Tony Busby needs to be disbarred and not allowed to practice law ever well, again. Well, he keeps getting hired for these controversies that happened. The Spurs employee guy who were up against Primo hired Busby. It reminds me of, um, who's that lawyer we make fun of uh, on the MLB oh, Kim side? Kardashian's dad. No, 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 no. The Rusty Harden. Rusty Harden. Oh, Watson's attorney. Oh, is that Watson's attorney? I yes. didn't. But that, a lot of the MLB players were using Rusty Hard on as a <laughs> uh, as an attorney. It's what it just reminded me of. Um, um, we had a couple of more. Uh, we had a couple of tragedies uh, this month as well. The biggest of which I think is the Grant Wall story. Yeah. So we unfortunately it didn't come. The news didn't come down until our last episode of the yeah. year. But in my opinion, it's probably up there in the top five stories of this whole year. Uh, Grant Wall, who, and I think you probably agree with me, most prominent soccer writer in the world, in my opinion, um, had a sub stack. That's where he wrote. Yeah, um, actually, we didn't. It, the cause of death wasn't available at the time of our episode, but ever since then, it turns out it was an erotic uh, aneurysm. So it was something death. that he was supposedly dealing with on his own health. Yeah, so, I mean, it goes to show you some of the health, you know, some of these high-pressure jobs that it takes on the body. I mean, he was only, what, 48? He was 48. Now, you know this from writing and being freelance, that it's a totally different world. When you're not working for a network, you're not having things set up for you, you're not getting certain amenities that you get working as a freelance writer, having to do everything on your contract. own. Or a contract, right? So for him, I, I, and I think he was doing coverage for Fox, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. But he had a big following. He did work for, I think, SI at one point. Yep. And then that kind of went by the wayside. And 
Unfortunately, he had a controversy which made people think that it was on purpose. Oh, the of the rainbow shirt. <laughs> the rainbow shirt, which you know when you go to Qatar, the politics are different over there than they right. are here. Speaking of, Brittany Griner. Well, yeah. Uh, Brittany Griner finally back in Russia. Oh, God. Back in the U.S., excuse me. From <laughs> Russia. Gosh. From Russia. Yes. Uh, and thank God it, it happened. Now, the White House, in my opinion, did not react quick enough to get her back. Now, at the same time, what I will say is that she was carrying hashish oil cartridges in her luggage from the U.S. to Russia, but at, which is her fault. Now, at the same time, the NBA and the WNBA, Kathy Engelbert, I'm talking to you, should, could have done more quicker and faster. Same thing with Adam Silver, because who owns portions of the WNBA? The NBA. NBA. So this all could have been handled differently. And and I'm going to blame the White House, too. I don't put politics on this show very often, but I blame the White House, too. Mm -hmm. uh, last thing, though, Nick, the madness that has been MLB free agency. This free agency has been over the top and unbelievable. DeGrom to the Rangers, Verlander to the Mets, Turner to the Phillies, and top it all off, Aaron Judge remains with the Yankees. Now, what a awkward turn of events that whole thing took and by the way we can't end this best of without a meme and a mistake by john Heyman with arson judge <laughs> arson we can't judge. we can't we can't leave that out it's got to be in there you can't of go course. into the new year without bringing that up i mean arson. the giants we don't we still don't know what the giants were going to offer Aaron Judge. It's but been it's a miserable offseason for the Giants. First that, and then they lose Carlos Rendon to the Yankees, and then they had Carlos Correa, and then he fails a physical and conveniently signs a deal with the Mets the next day. I mean, yeah, and obviously we're not doing our show show here, but yeah, yeah. Carlos Correa, who apparently had something come up with his physical from eight years ago, that's what they determined. Oh, well, we can't do that. Sorry. And then Steve Cohen with his large, large checkbook decides to defy all odds in the MLB 2022-2023 uh, hot stove season and says, you know what? Let's see. One, two, carry the five, carry the ten. Eight hundred million dollars. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we start the last best of. We start our best of with an AV story. We also have an AV story at the end of this best of two when the old Warren went out for his arrest. Oh. <sighs> We I mean, end, we start with AB and close with AB. It's full circle. <sighs> Antonio Brown needs to go away forever. He deserves no attention. He's never coming back to the NFL at this point. I think Absolutely that door not. that door is closed. Um, we talked about one of the most awkward stories of the year when he was in that pool in the Mirage or something in Vegas or something, and yep. that. I don't even want to relive that. That was so bad. Uh, and I feel bad for that woman, by the way. Um, <laughs> but it's been quite a year for this show. Uh, Empty the Bench went on quite a ride. And like I said at the beginning of this, we try to stay away from the most obvious stories. And we try to pick on things that are different. And then oh. we and then we'll sprinkle in the headlines, obviously, because we're a sports show. We're gonna yeah, talk. Yeah, well, I, I think I thought you were gonna go on that. You know, it's not normal for the end of the year to have most of your headlines, but uh, well, yes, uh, that too. Like I had said earlier on, that the having the biggest headlines of the year be at in December is not what you expect. Now you could debate the Kyrie Watson. stuff, the Nets, the Watson stuff. That's why sports shows are subjective. There's different opinions to different things. I so, mean, we, we didn't even talk about Aaron Rodgers. I mean, like, that's we a, whole a little bit last week, last week, a little bit. But I'm just saying, uh, like, if you, if you want to talk about topics of the year, Aaron Judge, uh, Aaron Judge, Aaron Rodgers could be up there. So take a look at all the all the clips that we had November to December, and then we'll close things out. Then he asks him about promoting the movie, uh, whatever we want to call it. And Kyrie goes on to interrupt Fidel every time he uh, is asking something and says, I'm not promoting anything. Huh? You're not promoting it. So you writing a tweet on your social media account. And you are a, I'm sorry, Nick, but you, and you are a public figure out there in the world in New York City. Yeah. You well, forget, forget New York City. A fucking Powerade bottle. And you're telling me you're not influential? He said he was not promoting it by tweeting it out. And I'm like, huh? 
nothing you fucking do does that. And we should should add as a caveat what we can't go into specifics about about what was in the anti-Semitic video or book because it's it's not, bad. It's horrifying. It's, it's, it's so, horrifying stuff. It's, it's basically saying that like black people don't know their history, basically. Right. And, and, the, and the, saying that and saying that everything in the world that's wrong is because of is because of Jews and uh, which is just it's stupefying how, how how ridiculous ridiculous it is even when you even when you don't take it, it even when you take it at face value i mean but again the the issue is not whether we're debating the merits of what he posted it said it's that he posted this obvious bullshit and it's pretty obvious that he believes this shit ime udoka i mean you, I, I, I'm pretty sure this. Move How do you go from one PR nightmare to another? I'm sorry to interrupt. There, I'm pretty I, sure this move was to keep Kevin Durant happy. No, well, for, first of all, they needed a coach, and they're pananking, and they say, "Oh well, let's go grab the guy who cheats on people." And I don't mean on the court; I mean they, off didn't, the court. they didn't. They didn't even let the controversy Adoka was in die down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is like the '98 Bulls, but every single person involved is Dennis Rodman. <laughs> But I, I just don't get it. I'm doing the show with Johnny, and all of a sudden, I see Woj break that tweet that says that Ima Udoka is finalizing a contract. Who the heck goes with the Nets? And I'm like, what the fuck? I, I said, did I enter Wayne's world? Did I enter? Did, did I enter like hell or Wayne's world where things are backwards? I mean, I, I can't make sense of this deal either. The team is kind of in an identity crisis because I mean, here's the thing. What it's only been seven or eight games. Why fire it? So you have that whole controversy with Durant where he said to fire Nash and to fire Marks. If you're going to do that, why not just fire Nash over the summer? You know why? Because uh, the credit I give to Joe Tsai as the owner, he is not taking shit from Kyrie and Durant. He's going to put his feet okay. in the ground. Fair. Very he fair. And Steve we'll Nash talk about the sacrificial lamb. But why only seven or eight games? I think part of it has to do with you're trying to clean up the mess now. They I mean, probably, well, I was gonna say, yeah, go ahead. Well, let me ask you how much does we'll get to Kyrie, but how much does Kyrie's controversy? Now oh, because now it's because now it's, I feel like that's pouring acid on, onto a place where you know trash was all littered. Gasoline, well, gasoline meat match. Well, first right. of all, the acid and the gasoline was poured on when Kyrie got the COVID situation and refused to get the vaccine. The acid on the garbage was poured when KD was threatening to uh, stay out of training camp with the Nets when he wanted to be traded. So technically, the two of them have been causing a lot of this issue. They could say all they want, that they're the stars and they have the contracts. They cause part of this issue, too. Any Net fan, any NBA fan who's coming out now and saying, well, we knew Kyrie was going to do all this. First of all, put your hand down. You're a freaking liar if you knew any of this was going to happen. He was signed in the 2018-2019 season before COVID was even history. So you're a bunch of liars. And these fake-ass Net fans who have no idea, they don't know anything about being a Net fan like me since they were in New Jersey. All these fair-weather Net fans who are in Brooklyn don't understand. Nick Morgan calling words. Nick Morgan calling out all the hipster net fans. Ooh. Well, Nick because all the net it. fans, the, all these New York fans, because that's really what they are, they jumped from being a Nick fan to a net fan because they saw that the Nets went to Brooklyn and left New Jersey. You're gonna make them cry into their kombucha and PBR, dude. <laughs> Well, then I'm tired of them saying they knew what Kyrie was going to be. You didn't know what Kyrie was going to be because COVID wasn't a thing when he signed as a free agent. I think Kyrie knew, knew what he was going to be. And by the way, the only way you were getting KD was with Kyrie. But that's my point. Mark said, you know what? As much as their head cases, I would rather have the talent to compete rather than uh, have no talent at all and be another disappointment and it's potentially be, lose yeah, my job. And technically, he's not wrong. Rather than crazy and bad. And technically, he's not wrong because you need stars to compete. Now, the one thing I will say is the big three does not work anymore. So I was looking at the list, okay? And I think I started to tell Nick about this, that when I look at this list, one, the apologizing and condemning of the movie, that's kind of a hearsay thing. So as long as he technically apologizes... Well, let me ask. Does that statement he released after he, where he apologized after no. he got suspended count? No, no, because no, because the organization didn't take the money after it was offered. So that's another issue. 
So I'd say so that he's going to run into a problem then when it comes to the meet with ADL and Jewish leaders. One, well, they, right, they one the donation. One, the ADL leader said, fuck off until you make a legitimate apology. I'm sorry, but that's the truth here. Well, okay, Kyrie Irving needs to realize that he has a what before he can get help. I mean, a problem. he's going to realize he has a problem. A problem. Yeah. Okay, problem. so <laughs> until he is willing to admit I have a problem and I said anti-Semitic things, none of this is going to happen. So that's my answer. Until he realizes that he did something wrong, none of this list is going to happen. So, in other words, you think he has played it and then that's uniform for the last time? Yes. I think he's done. And you know what? I think I'll go one step further. I think he's going to retire. Um, not after the, not until the season's over. I mean, he's, I don't know if he's taking, going away from that money. No. He's guaranteed. He's. Um, so I, I agree with Johnny. I think – I agree with Johnny. I don't think until after the season, but I think it's going to be very interesting once this Nets contract runs out. If no one's going to take him. If anyone is going to take him. No, hell no. No one's going to take him unless it's for the player minimum at this point, which, wow. by the way, think about something else. Two, I said this last week as well. $250 million. Okay? That's what he's made in his career. Do you think he cares about sensitivity training and anti-Semitic training and all this other BS that goes on? One more World Series, and the reason why that happened is because the Phillies don't have pitching. And, I mean, hats off to the Astros pitching staff. I mean, I mean, Verlander was able to extract his head from his anus long enough to, to pull together five great innings and get a win. Christian Javier was, was, was brilliant, and so was... Um, for Amber Valdez. I mean, com combine no hitter for Christ's sake. So uh, credit where credit is due, coming from the saltiest person on planet Earth right now. But the list of people that I am happy for or or, or 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 gracious about starts and ends with one Dusty Baker. He's the only person who deserves it. I'll I'll give one to Trey Mancini as well. Yeah, Trey Mancini as well. Sorry, I for, I forgot about Trey Mancini. Uh, but, I, I, I made that mistake too, so I I give two. two and by the way, who was the name of the player that won the MVP in both the uh, LCS and the World Series? Jeremy Pena. Jeremy Pena. <laughs> who, by the way, came out of their uh, farm system. By the way. You need to admit this, Nick, too. The Astros probably are one of the best at farm Our system, system manage yes, management. Why are you trying to tweak me? What, what, what are you, a secret Mets fan? What the fuck? Secret Mets fan? No, no. Mets? I mean, Forget we do have, we do have uh, footage of you and me. Mets By the fan. way, SNY app, screw you. Look, Yankees this is my Zapruder Mets. film. I'm going to keep looking at that piece of footage. And you know what? Every time he tweaks me, Put that put put it up on the screen. Yankees fans for Mets. We keep hearkening back to the Adam Silver of Donald Sterling's days, but we keep talking about that. We keep talking about that, but it's like now he then now that Adam Silver well and truly is gone. What were we gonna say, Johnny? No, I, I it's amazing how much he's fallen as commissioner. It's it's unbelievable. If, if if I'm telling you he dropped, that means it's a problem. Oh, I'm the yeah. biggest I'm the biggest NBA person here for crying out loud, and I'm telling you he's not the top commissioner anymore. Oh, no, I I don't know how you can sit here right now and say and say that he is. Between I mean, this, Robert Sarver, and the, see the thing is too, you know, you want to say well, Goodell hasn't handled his um his things. Uh, perfect either and I'm like that's true but here's the difference the NFL it's invincible to the NFL it's not invincible to the NBA and the CBA runs out in the NBA they are going to a lockout I'm telling you right now because they are having a whole they have a whole host of problems right now that they need to to fix and this situation between with with Kyrie with the NBA and the NBA Players Association and uh, Tamika Tremelglio uh it's I'm telling you, they're going. They are going down a bad road, and it has been falling fast. I mean, oh, and on top of that, she's been going after Adam Silver. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, think about think about it. Think about all the think about all the events that have happened from Robert Sarver to this, and and it, this is not helping either. And it's just heading down a very very bad road. So this thing with Silver, which took him, it seemed like forever and a day to finally make a comment and meet him about. Is not. I'm sorry. It's just. It's not a good look. It's kind of ironic that two stories break last Wednesday. Number one. Number one. This one from Forbes about uh, the, this, the beginning of this process, and then we find out later on in the day last Wednesday from ESPN about uh, the financial improprieties that yes or, that the organization is under for like the second time. And yeah, I was, um, I was wondering if that's some sort of coincidence, Tom. That 
this comes out that Dan Snyder's beginning this process, and then you hear another the story that comes out from what the uh, ESPN. Yeah, that's <laughs> when I was doing my minute about that last week. I I was gonna say that, but I wanted to be a little bit clean. But yeah, you know what? Coincidence? Though? I think not. I think not exactly. I think are rooting for this so hard is because Dan Snyder has gotten up to all this unethical, improper shit. But well, wait a minute. Like, wait a like, minute. I, like, I know, you, like, I know, new owner could mean new life to a team, which could be devastating for, you know, like, our Giants and such. But I think it's just a matter of, guys, that Dan Snyder is just such a shithead. That even his well, own owner, owners don't like is. him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So all this time, we've been hearing Dan, Dan Snyder say this. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Oh my God. Stop fucking lying. So he's been saying that the whole time. But now he's selling the team. And like you both said, financial improprieties. So he's not. So maybe he is lying. So Dan, why are you lying? I'm going to tell you right now. That lawsuit is going to get thrown out so quick. And, I, and the reason I say that is because you're you're directly suing the NFL and Dan Snyder and the commanders. You really think the court system is gonna And and he kind of and he kind of admits since it took place outside the district, there's limited things that they can sue for. This is going to be As them being stonewalled by just just the This lawsuit agreed. This lawsuit is too big. I'm just gonna say that right now. Also the, on the NFL and Goodell on the NFL and Goodell end. Once again, you know, I know we rat on Roger Goodell a lot. We have a Roger Goodell strikes again and all of that. But <laughs> who does Roger Goodell work for? Mm, let owners. me think of it. Let me think about it. The owners. And who is <clears throat> one of the owners of the NFL? Dan. Dan Snyder. Snyder. And for the longest time, I know in recent reports we've heard about how other owners are starting to be unable to with to Stan Snyder and want him gone. But for the longest time, we didn't hear that. For the longest time, it was business as usual and that, you know, hey, Goodell's got to protect this job. The university learned that Jones had been charged with misdemeanor concealed weapon charges in February of 2021. Did that, like, go, like, under the carpet like a dust bunny? Like, that's that's my question, because if he's a student there at the time, you would think maybe the school would be notified that, hey, a student has been charged. And someone reportedly said or had a report that he had a gun and they never did anything about it. Like someone reported it, uh, reportedly said on campus that he had it and they never found anything. So they just let it go. So this is the second time in a three month span, I think. Yeah, because. Uh, San Diego was in uh, or the kicking gun, Areza. That was in August, late or late August, early September, right? Yes. This is the yes. second time in a three month span we're asking ourselves it, what a university was doing if it was twiddling their thumbs or something like that. It was Judge's year. That was going. It was there. There was an air of we it, we we couldn't see the three of us could not see this at the time, but it seemed on on upon hindsight there was an inevitability to this. The minute that sixty-second ball left the park in Globe Life. Well, that's what uh, right. You just took, and actually, I agree with you. You took the point that I was about to say. As soon as he broke the record, it was his MVP award. I don't yeah, care. It, it, there was an air of inevitability to it, even though the three of us didn't see it. Because well, no, we we thought it was. We thought it was, but we were scared that the we baseball guys were going was, to screw but, it up but again. Because well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was going to say, and Nick, what Nick is referring to is the Yankee bias that comes out in the award voting. You mean the Yankee bias or the anti-Yankee bias? Anti-Yankee bias. You, you know what I mean, the bias against the Yankees. I don't even know if it was all that because, I, I, honest to God, I think it was people were debating that so heavily on Twitter and you saw a lot of sports writers, the ones that even didn't even have votes, chime in on it. So I think it kind of colored our perception of, you know, people were really debating this fiercely about Judge or Otani. I mean, go ask didn't come out in the voting, and it go, didn't end up coming out in the voting. Go ask Justin Verlander's brother what he thought about the Cy Young Award. <laughs> he did well. That's why they didn't give him a vote. By the way, Tony Busby, you're a fucking douchebag for showing up at who reportedly is going to show up in a suite with some of the accusers. I mean, that's really not going to do. That's really not going to do anything because I mean, you're you're spending money to. Watch the second. Uh, watch. You're the, putting money into Sean Watson's pocket. Yeah, watch the person to watch the person who 
who sexually assaulted you? That, I mean, that, 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 that's, kind, that's kind of a, that's kind of a douchebag move there. It's kind of fucked up if you ask me. That's kind of a douchebag move there, Tony. I mean, what are you accomplishing? Just so like you could be in the stand and say, I was there. What, what you think you're going to stare him down and all of a sudden make, make the show and throw it into the stands? I mean, I, mean, I wish that I wish that could be the case, but you know what? I don't think it's going to be. What is that? The, I got you. I'm going to, I'm going to find you in the back of the stadium and force you to do something like I, I, <sighs> you're right. I, I mean, I have to take it here, but I'm not happy about it. Let's put it that way. You don't have to be. It's okay. Because he, he's an outspoken, quote unquote, loudmouth receiver. Again, he's he's given the automatic designation of cancer, even though his well, team is, uh, of clubhouse cancer, even though his you know his teammates really don't have anything but nice things to say about him. Yeah, but here's the problem though: <laughs> like he's doing all this nonsense off the field and all this stuff, but he's not on the field producing. When you're producing on the field, then you get away with a lot of nonsense. Look at Antonio Brown when he was on the field as a star; no one batted an eye. When he did they all, his... uh, you know, in retrospect, they should have batted an eye. No, no, I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying that when Antonio Brown was a star with the Steelers and really was carrying them, he no one gave a shit. Once he sucked and everyone and he was declining and everything happened, all his antics were covered by the media. Apparently, there's a mystery team, but I oh again, we haven't heard anything about it. It. It reminds me of a bad version of Family Guy. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's yeah. the mystery box. Wait, wait anything, a minute. Mystery box could be anything. It could, it could be, be a box. <laughs> wait, did you say the Browns? Browns? Did you yeah. say the Browns? Yeah, it could even be the Cleveland Browns. He was already with the Browns. <laughs> exactly. Could even be the Browns. God. But still, I mean, all the teams that we just listed are desperate for receiver help. I mean... The Cowboys less so because they're ahead of the Giants in the NFC East. And standard. someone, someone tell I Jared don't have receivers except for except for Darius Slayton. I mean, here's my problem. Here's my problem, Nick. This is a guy who needs help. You screamed it. You screamed it when we did this story for the first time back in January that this guy needed mental health help. Yes, and he still however, does. However, he just seems to just not care either not care or refuse help or refuse to recognize that he has a problem because it's been a year i mean nick look at the way he treated tom brady yeah i know we joked about tom brady and his divorce as well but you saw the shots he was taking and this well, is you saw the text messages he returned back we saw that and this is a guy tom brady who tried to get him on his team at both in New England and in Tampa Bay? Well, both tried teams. Yeah, I think he, said. he was on both times. Yeah. Well, he didn't. He didn't play a game in New England because of, or was it only one game? Because it was right one game came, came the sexual assault. Uh, one game. Yeah. I mean, so, what what he doesn't realize is a guy who has seven Super Bowl rings and sticking his neck out and saying. Come play with me. I'll take you in. We'll win I, a, a Super say, Bowl ring. Say what you want about Tom Brady, the athlete, or say what you want to say about Tom Brady and his personality. But the man is being a man. The He's throwing you a bone. Throwing you a bone and trying to be a help, trying to be a guiding light. Look how you treated him. Uh, he let you live in his house. Yes. People forget that, by the way, that Tom Brady said to A.B., come live in my house. I think that was like when they were teammates just to be on a more bond level. But mm -hmm. the, it, this is just getting worse. And by the way, AB working with uh, Kanye West on Donda Sports, a whole. Oh, add that, oh, 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 that's a disaster now. Add that to the list of uh, BS that AB has caused this year. It's desperation. It's clear desperation. You know what the Rangers ownership said? Well, we have a new stadium, and we got to put butts in seats, as Nick Federer would say. And guess what? We and overspent. We... Well, funny that you say that, Nick. For, you forgot something. There is new a new president of baseball operations as of the middle of last season, Chris Young. Oh, from the Mets organization. How ironic! And if you remember something, 
they spent a whole lot of money last offseason signing Corey Seager and uh, Martin Perez. And they and still ended up, yeah, like 300, 300 plus million for Corey Seager specifically. And they still ended up finishing 60 and 102 as one of the worst teams in baseball, let alone the American League. See, what people forget to realize is that just because you spend all that money, you have to get those players to play together as a team. <laughs> uh, yes. But well, I mean, one person a team does not make, but it is also a matter of the pieces that you put around. So yes, they had Corey Seager. Yes, they had uh, Martin Perez. I mean, I mean Marcus Simeon. Marcus Simeon, pardon me. And now they're going to have Jacob Degrom. So basically, what I view this is, as I've been saying, that Chris Young is looking at this Degrom move and basically saying it's because we have to prove correct. We have to prove our spending from last season, correct? And how are we going to do that? By spending this offseason. And we're just going to continue to spend and spend because we're tired of being the little brother team in uh, in Texas. Oh, you mean because Houston's actually winning games and in their division and Seattle's winning games in their division? I mean, you're never going to beat those two teams right now, I'm telling you. No. So, I mean, have they made improvements to their team? I mean, technically, on paper they have. But are they have they have they made improvements in the fact that they can beat the Astros for a division title? No. Uh, no, hell no. Team? He may not even be ready till the 2023 season. Again, not surprised. Torn ACL. That sometimes takes a year plus to recover That's a year, from. Yeah. I mean, one, I would stay away from Odell this whole season, including the playoffs, because you don't know if he's gonna be healthy. You don't know if he's gonna injure himself again. I mean, heck, it was a freak injury during the Super Bowl. Now, I think you said this, and I agreed with you when we a couple of weeks ago that Odell was probably going to be the MVP if he didn't get hurt in the yeah, Super Bowl. He was he was, ha- he was on track. The first quarter, he had a tremendous quarter. He probably he probably he probably would have been in contention. So he is a good player. I'm not denying it. I don't think he's a number one wide receiver anymore. I've been on the record for that for the last couple of weeks now that. I think he's a number mm-hmm. two, a number two at best. I maybe lower. I think he's a a decent player, but the Giants, who were supposedly having dinner with him and thinking about bringing him in, you're not a wide receiver away from winning a Super Bowl. No, but they do need a wide receiver now. Granted, the receivers that they've been with are okay. I just think Nick, and maybe it, this stays the same even with Odell. I don't know. Maybe you're the Jets fan here. Maybe you can help me out from a non-Giant fan perspective. If the Giants, you know, regardless of how the rest of the season goes, if they just miss the playoffs, if they make the playoffs as a wild card, do you, considering how the season has gone, the good that has been presented, do you have to give Danny another contract based on the fact that he's had no receiving core, basically? I mean, what I will say is that Daniel Jones played way better than I expected. I was expecting him to have a – first of all, all of New York football is having a way better better season than we expected. Let's go on that preface first. Absolutely. I mean, Giants are are in the hunt. Jets are in the hunt. Bills are one of the best teams in the NFL right now. I mean, after that horrible loss to the Vikings this past week. um, But – both teams are in the hunt. Both teams were supposed to be like 500 at best. A little insane considering he'll be 40 by the time that deal is done. Yes, but... By the way, you were making this comparison before. Aaron Judge and Trey Turner, both about uh, 29 and 30. Oh, yeah, both getting contracts uh, till they're 39, 40 years old. By the way, I wonder if Aaron Judge is looking at this deal partially also. Yeah, if he's getting... If Trey Turner's getting... Well, Nick, I'm glad you brought that up because... Here's the thing. This was his number two offer in terms of value. That That's scary. The Padres, Nick, reportedly offered him somewhere around at least 345 to 350 at least. It could have even reached $360 million. And he turned it down <sighs> to go to Philadelphia. Now, there are reasons that players will turn down the larger deal 
in order to take lesser money. One could be the ears. One could be because they want to go to a contender. One could be because uh, one could be because maybe they don't like a certain franchise or only want to play for a certain franchise. Number four could be the hometown edge, which, by the way, we'll talk about Judge potentially going east to west. Here, this is a case of Turner. Uh, here's a case of Turner going west to east. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Trey Turner actually has family in the tri-state area. Now, granted, Philadelphia is not in the tri-state area, but it is close enough that the $300 million, you know, was basically enough, especially when they gave him 11 years that he doesn't exactly have to worry about a contract ever again. Well, now, here's the difference, though. Obviously, Judge is probably, I shouldn't say probably, is going to get more money, but I don't know. Is, we have this discussion all the time. Is it years? Is it money? Is it viability? Which What are these players looking for? We don't know. Now, it doesn't matter how many years. As long as you get the money, it doesn't matter how many years it's really over. There you go. Two years, $86 million deal, and a vesting third-year option. So, I'm, I mean, this is a crazy deal in, in every way, shape, or form. Well, let me put it to you this way. I don't think this deal is as crazy as they would have signing the ground again. Because, yeah, Verlander, it, there is some risk with him. But Jacob deGrom also has had his share of injuries. And you know what? Maybe you can debate that deGrom is better than Verlander. But there's two magical words with deGrom. Win, healthy. Now, granted, Verlander also has had his own Tommy John surgery as of late. But guess what, Nick? Last I checked, last season... He won the AL Cy Young and helped the Houston Astros to a World Series. So just, just be careful because just remember, 39 years old, off Tommy John's surgery, one injury, he could be done. Well, you know what? But that's why, granted, it's better to have this two-year deal because Jacob DeGrom, hey, Jacob DeGrom's what, 34? Who's yeah. Not to say, who's not to say something could happen to him and then that five-year deal could have been worse. But you know what's Actually, embarrassing, though? The, uh, the embarrassing thing is Verlander was given more money per year. I mean, Nick, I think he kind of earned it being the Cy Young award winner last year. I get it, but DeGrom is five years younger. And I get it, but you know what? They have less dedicated to Verlander. They're less, you know, they don't owe as much They, in terms of time. He thought he had bronchitis. He was given cough syrup and ibuprofen. And he basically said that his body just had basically at one point given out on him, which led to him taking a couple of rare days off between, I think it was like the second round and the quarterfinals or something like that. I'm surprised he traveled. Why is, why is, why is that? Cause if his body was giving out on him, if like, if this stuff, no, was... I think it was, I think it was during his time there, not before. Yeah. Not I think before that's the flight. I... That's what I thought I'd read that it was while he was there that it was it was, that it was that he right. Died. But if but if he had prior medical history with everything that's going on in the world right now, I'm surprised he would travel. Well, do we know if he had any prior medical issues I don't before know. he went supposedly, there? Supposedly, supposedly. Oh, yeah, see, that's something that's going to come out over time. That would I, I think we're going to learn a lot more over the holidays here, and probably when we come back in 2023, because okay. I mean, if you're 48 years old, I mean, there's definitely got to be. Uh, something to it but there's definitely a bunch of factors that are definitely in play right now one factor i will give by the way is grant wall is up there with the the guys who i consider the major insiders of all the other sports so like a woge or a shams or if you want to go jeff passon or you want to go any other oh, wow. sport okay. i would throw them i would throw grant wall up there as one of the guys who covers soccer i would even say he is the number one insider in soccer Brittany Griner should have been back a long time ago. But what about Paul Whelan? Okay, that's the question I have. So supposedly it was several months ago that they offered the merchant to death for Griner and Whelan, and Russia basically said, yeah, go F yourselves. Well, I'm not surprised by that. Look who's running the country over there. <laughs> I, this story, I mean, it has a, I wouldn't call it the happy ending. I would call it a... Good ending. But unfortunately, Nick, number one, as we mentioned, Griner was being used. Like we've already used this, and you just used the term of the last story, political football. 
And as far as we go from a societal standpoint, you know, unfortunately, celebrity status will get you places and will get you places and will get you. I mean, with more. first of all, didn't we hear reports that Brittany Griner like basically s- said she hates the U.S. anyway? I can't confirm or deny those. But I've I've heard rumors of it that she, that she well, hated the U.S. I, I, oh, the only thing I remember was LeBron telling her to not. Tonight. Oh, good. That's another prize you should be listening to. <laughs> oh, LeBron. I was going to say, the, that, Nick that, off there. That's the perfect political influence to listen to in the sports world. I, I don't know. I, I'm happy she's back, but Paul Whelan is coming up on four years being stuck in Russia. Okay? That's the problem. He is the military guy. Okay? Uh, what The U.S. doesn't care about the military. Okay. Got it. I mean, Nick... You don't even have to look at this situation. You just have to look at all those uh, all those men and women who come back over here with PTSD, and we basically just say, go fuck yourself. So there's two reasons to me why I think this got done. Number one, Aaron Judge did take a discount at the end of the day because he ultimately wanted to be a Yankee. And you know what? Not many t- athletes this day and age do that. And number two, the Yankees did their part in that they did go to that ninth year. And I think that's ultimately what did it. And we've seen recently in baseball that – not only is it the money, guys, it's really the length of these contracts. And I just remember one of the first topics that I talked about when I joined your network was Freddie Freeman and how the Braves offered him five for 140, but the Dodgers were the only team to go to the sixth year. And I think that's why he went over there. So uh, Judge, coming back here, it's great. And, yeah, that's the crazy. The other crazy part that broke in the uh, minutes and hours after the initial report that, was that there was a the, mystery team. There was a mystery team, and it was the Padres, and they supposedly did offer more, $400 million, and they got they struck out. Now, granted, I know, Nick Morrison, you're not a fan of the terms, Johnny. You're not you know, iffy on the terms. I am kind of as I'm well. I'm not really bullish on the terms either. I know. Because, However, you know. once, the, once the Verlander contract happened, once Trey Turner got 11 years, that the Yankees were done in. It was like, at this point, you either have – because I think – Hal and Cashman have now realized you have to spend in this off season, otherwise you get like nobody. I said in, otherwise, like I said in August, it'd be Baby Bombers 2.0 at that point. It would be uh, now- the Yankees would. I know we hate the term, but if they did not get this done, and they do not spend, and we'll, we're still having issues and discussions about Yankee spending, not spending. But if the Yankees went in, what the first signings of free agency tells me is that if the Yankees went in with the strategy that we thought. They were going to go into. I know we hate this word in New York, but the Yankees were looking at the word rebuild. And that is 2022 in sports. Holy cow. We made it to the end of the year. We're done. 2022 is officially. Where is it? Is officially history. I'm so looking forward to 2023. There's a lot coming up. More shows coming to this network. More people coming. Tom, you met someone during our stream the other night. Yeah. Or, if that's last week now. I can't. I'm losing track of time yeah, at this Armin. point. And we have a lot to do. A lot to come. Uh, we're growing our TikTok presence. We're growing, uh, which I never thought I would say those words. Actually, um, Instagram is growing. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, just a lot of stuff that's going to be making its way over in 2023. You know, and uh, we'll have the same attitude, though. Just same keep going attitude. We're going to uh, have a lot of good stuff with 2023, I'm hoping. I mean, you have MMA Outsiders, which is definitely, I see the rise on it coming. Um, you did a couple of great interviews over the last week or so. Um and then you also you also had a big story of the year, which I, I think it trickled over to here. The the Krause story? The James Krause story, yeah, which we discussed on uh, the MMA Outsiders uh, award show, our own little best of 2022, which went up yesterday. So feel free to check that out. So that was a big story. And I saw someone left a response on our social media to it. Um, yeah. But that was big. And we had a lot of crossover between MMA show and game on and ETB. We had a lot of our, uh, NFL live streams that we did, which I'm sure we'll come back next year and try to get more people on those. Cause those are fun with more people on them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's a lot to come. Like I said, the ETB minutes will still continue. Uh, you have uh, the moment of glory. Mayhem. Mayhem. 
uh, mayhem. Oh my god, moment of mayhem, <laughs> moment, moment of glory. That doesn't make sense. You're right, moment of mayhem for uh, MMA outsiders, and obviously, uh, just everything else along the way. So, thank god it's finally over. 2022 can be flushed down the toilet. <sighs> uh, so, uh, yeah, finally done. So, for Nick Morgison, I'm Tom Albano. Happy New Year, everybody. We'll see you in 2023. Happy New Year. <laughs>